carry on my way with some <laughs> beach beach wind, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go for it, Jonesy. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Super Show podcast. I am Jonesy, and today, as always, I am joined by two legends of the gaming industry. It is Jamie and Chris. Hello, oh. guys. Hello, hello. Wow, legends of the gaming industry. Well, I never. I'll take I thought it. I'd fluff it a bit. I mean, how you, how you boys doing? You're right. Yeah. I've been called worse things, Alex Jones. So I'll, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm happy today. I, I came into this kind of feeling a bit down, but you've lifted my spirits. You make me soar on the wings of giants and angels from Atlanta. I'm glad you qualified that because when you said I make you soar, I got a little bit worried. Like how, how have I hurt you? No, like, like, but like no. eagle. Uh, you guys eagle. are dads. I think at this stage, anything makes you soar, right? You get out of bed in the morning and you buckle a knee. That's Dude, how it it's works. True. Dude, it's, it's so true. true. <laughs> But hey, look, thank you for joining us. We are the Super Show Pod, um, and we're available on any podcast platform you might happen to frequent, of course, on iTunes, also Google Podcasts and Spotify, but we're also on any other podcasting platform of your choice. Name I don't know them. what they are. Name them. Chris them. knows what they are. Like, Name them. Go I, on. I'm, I, I can't. I'll just um, use your line. Here you go. Podcasters.fuck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Spunk.io and... Mm-hmm. One more, one more. Uh, Spunk.io. Listen, li- listen to the number two dot yeah. me forward yeah. slash Super Show Punk. Yes. We couldn't get we couldn't get the Super Show Pod as like a URL, so yeah, all, we had to work with what we had. All correct. Well, slightly. It wasn't Super Show Punk. It was forward slash Super Show Spunk. Sorry. Yes. A, that's yeah. a theme. A theme. Yeah. But hey, look. <laughs> We're on all those platforms, but we wouldn't be on any of them if it wasn't for our awesome Patreons over on, uh, no, sorry, patrons over at patreon.com. I always get that wrong. I'm terrible. Sorry. Um, we are whole, nearly wholly, completely supported by those guys, and they're awesome. So we're going to give them a little shout out because we like to. So let's, I would like to say thank you to Aaron Cameron, Brett Zerbrig, Freddie K. Official, Hacksaw Book Reed, Javela Cujo, Leo Merga, Lonnie Thompson, Manuel Guerrero, Mindful Pig, Nathan Piers, Robert Rottermond, William Sherry, and the three big dogs, Peaswad, The Dude Abides, and Skylar Music. But thank you to all of our patrons. You are wonderful people and you you keep us going so we wouldn't be here without you legends absolute legends we are a five star podcast so if you do listen to this and you fancy giving us a rating why not make it a five star one um, on whatever (laughs) podcasting platform you happen to be frequenting and with that having been said I think we should move on to the um, comment of the week but before we do that Jonesy can I I just interject you just very very quickly go for it I, I, I just want to say thank you for taking on hosting duties you you bring a a certain gravitas to the role that uh, has been sorely missing all, all this time. So, yeah, thanks. Well, look, I, we don't want to burn you out. We don't want to use you up. So we have to give you a break every now and then. Yeah, and that's true. this is my, this is m- me doing that by taking use over. Use me, use me. <laughs> giving you a break. <laughs> so the, the comment of the week this week comes from uh, Mirko. And the comment is, my issue with Game Pass is that much like Netflix, it's still not profitable and in, in Microsoft fashion will probably contribute to killing talented studios they've acquired. Mm. Game Pass does not promote boundaries, pushing graphics and gameplay. And in the context of Xbox, it does not matter if those exclusives are on Game Pass from day one or not, if they're crap. You don't play games because they're cheap or free you play them because they're fun and entertaining that's why i do not care about game pass and stick with sony wow so um i'd like to hear your guys thoughts i I, I think there's some truth there right um maybe not necessarily in terms of the uh closing down studios but certainly on the oh well it's good enough because it's on game pass i mean jamie you, you you're the person who's played the most kind of like crappy games pass games and <laughs> yeah. you've given them passes because it's just been that I'm, it's like i'm gonna talk free. about a super shit game uh in the next probably 15 minutes or so <laughs> that i played just because it's on game pass okay but not only that you played um uh crackdown three uh chris we're talking about trying to find games that aren't shit so oh, just okay uh state of decay 2 Said K two, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I played. A, I, I, do you know what it was? It's funny you mentioned Crackdown three. It was about a month or two after Crackdown three when yeah. Outer Wilds and Void Bastards both dropped at the same time. Oh yeah, and they yeah. were both example of indie games that might have just flown under the radar had they not had the kind of it's on Game Pass, so you might as well angle to it. So almost and, like the other right. the other version, the other the flip side of the, that coin that we're kind of discussing. Yeah. And it's still happening, like. You go back and watch our recap of that Microsoft event last week from uh, last week's podcast, and 
this game being on Game Pass, X game being on Game Pass, is still like it's it's kind of like a it's exciting because it's like oh I let me put it this way buying games for full price sometimes feels strange now and that's thanks to services like Game Pass. <laughs> When but, you see how good some some titles are that are free or on a service, it does kind of make you wonder why you're paying, you know, sixty dollars yeah. for something. I guess. Even yeah, play, but, we're going to get there, but even PlayStation Plus this month, like you look at what you're getting, and you're like, there are less and less reasons to spend a, a lot of money on games right now. But anyway, I'm getting too far ahead. I know. Yeah, but uh, pushing bound like not pushing boundaries, I can totally believe that that could become a case. It's almost like uh, so. Funny enough, Moko mentioned Netflix, and it's almost like that whole there was that. That I can't remember if it was a leak or a statement or whatever it was, but basically they were saying that Netflix hardly ever goes past season two or three of new shows because even if they are well viewed, it's just not profitable for Netflix to continue. So they just yeah. can them. Right. I think that might have changed lately. Um, you know, obviously I'm not talking about like your Stranger Things or whatever, but I, I, I can totally see that like if... Look, making a game and then Microsoft coming to you and saying, hey, that's perfect for Games Pass, that's different, right? But if you're making a game specifically for Games Pass, if you're a Microsoft studio, there's there's like a, a baseline that yeah. you've got to get. Is that really going to push you to go over it? I don't know. I think it's a it's fair a, point. Yeah. It is, and I guess it's hard to counter because it's all very hard to quantify. And you, you mentioned Netflix and the TV side of things. I think their movie programming is just as bizarre because <laughs> you look at something like The Irishman, which all conventional movie studios had no interest in, and Netflix stepped in and said, no, we're not already interested, but we'll give you whatever it was, $100, 150000000 million yeah. to make it. And because they're a company that only ever announced their t- statistics in the form of A, like active users and accounts, and B, the number of people who watch something, usually in a short period of time, like first 24 hours, first week or so. There's no way of equating the two. Like fucking uh, two billion people, the you know, quarter of the population of the world might have watched Bird Box inside the first week. <laughs> but like, I don't know what that means. That's not, that's not Those aren't numbers. So... Xbox are going down a similar path where they're releasing the numbers in terms of the amount of people who signed up to Game Pass. But we don't know either A, how many people need to play Halo Infinite, or B, how many people need to sign up just to play Halo Infinite before spending $100 million on a video game starts to pay itself off. If it ever yeah. does. Like, it's a, it's a strange one. That said, I don't think personally so far, and maybe Merka would Mercury. Mer- Mercur- Fucking hell, guys! <laughs> hold on, hold on, Jamie. Can, can you just can we can we just can we just pretend he's called Mark or something? What are these names about? I mean, Mark is not that hard, dude. Are you having a stroke or something? Mark. He's called Mar- Mark. Can Mark. Marcus. No, I, that's offensive. Merco. It's because I was going to finish. Whenever I say Merco, I'm usually used to say Merco Crocop, and I'm not saying that this time because unless this is Merco Crocop, in which case, <laughs> shout out to you. I don't know why you're watching our podcast. Um, huh. What I would say about Merco's point is that I don't know if Game Pass has been around long enough that we can identify that that's the way it's trending because so far I'd almost say that it's trending the opposite way, with the exception of the fact that Halo Infinite looked ropey and you'd say, <laughs> why do, why wouldn't Microsoft just throw Microsoft money in it? Why didn't Bill Gates just get the checkbook out and say, hey, make it look good? Um, no, but hold on, but they did throw the Microsoft checkbook at it. It was like the most one of the most expensive games it it's, like not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not expensive enough, clearly. <laughs> they spent the money in the wrong place, for sure. Yeah, uh, so I don't More know. More on graphics. I, I, but, I, but I'll put it this way. I'm staying optimistic. I'm not even an Xbox guy. People know that PlayStation's my primary platform, but I'm staying optimistic about Game Pass because I think it could be a good thing and remains a yeah. good thing for the time being for gamers. I, I think we need to, we need to remind uh, you know the handful of people, admittedly, listening to the podcast, that when Microsoft started acquiring all of these uh, talented studios, as Moko puts it, um, their whole premise, the, the reason that so they'd approached the studios and they'd say, what's your dream project that you've never financially been able to do? And they said, that's what we want you to make. So at least in, in the thinking behind it, they're almost trying to avoid this thing of playing it safe just because it's free on Games Pass. Mm-hmm. Sure. Maybe, maybe they kind of like tear their, their students and say, actually, you know what, the, the fucking state of decay dudes just yeah, make whatever fucking janky thing you want to make. No one, you know, it's <laughs> zombies and it's free. It'll be fine. But then, you know, you, you get other people like um, Obsidian, 
for example, sure. saying, hey, Obsidian, if you had Microsoft money, what would you make? And they released that trailer for Avowed, which we have no idea what it Obsidian. fucking is, but it fucking tingles me in the right way. I, I very much like that hypothetical, Chris, for one reason and one reason alone. The idea that there's a studio out there that's phone rings, Bill Gates is on the buzzer, <laughs> they pick up the phone, Billy G says- Hold on, hold on, you gotta do the, you gotta do the voice though. I wasn't, I'm not, I can't do yeah, Billy you gotta G's do voice. The voice. It's, I haven't it's, heard this. This is a podcast audio medium. I don't know if I know what Bill Gates sounds like. Oh, you can't, uh, I don't yeah, know. that's kind uh, of it, oh, I, I didn't lose <laughs> my virginity until I was 27. <laughs> I don't know. I guarantee that if Bill Gates calls you, he's one of those people that is actually his uh, PA who calls you and then says, can you hold for a bill? And they're like, you're like, yeah, oh, right. when they've called you, that's the worst. That is the worst. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not doing Billy G's voice, but I was going to say, I love the idea that there's a studio out there in the world that picks up that phone call. Bill Gates says, blank check, do whatever you want to do. And they respond with two words, the gunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, someone yeah, exactly. did. Uh, Exactly. I don't know. I, I'm kind of. Hold on, I, I hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me guess, Alex Jones. You're kind of down the middle. <laughs> no, I'm kind of against what Mirko's saying, oh. and I think they almost, oh. they almost disprove their point because they say much like Netflix, they're still not making money. But then you look at the quality of the programming on Netflix, and I think from what Mirko's saying, you'd expect the quality and everything to go down over the years. But for that's not what's that's not what's happened with Netflix. The quality's gone up, if anything. I don't they know. Keep getting do, better do, writers, do, do, better shows. Remember last week when I was talking about that. Fucking Desperados movie on Netflix. <laughs> I'm not saying everything they make is top tier. I'm just saying that the, I mean, the how general much are level. They paying fucking Adam Sandler for fucking <laughs> too much, ridic ridiculous too much. Six, whatever it was fucking called. But then, like, oh, God, oh, God, yeah. it's always hard to tell because these are big monies that can afford to throw money around. These are big companies, excuse me, that can afford to throw money big around. Big monies. These are, hey guys, these are big monies. I like how you're holding your hands up as well. People, if, you, if you're just listening, Jamie, Jamie just lifted his hey, hands to his face and fellas, said, big monies. Fellas, big monies. These, these are big monies. Um, no, but what I was going to say is that you look at Apple's approach and they are, for all intents and purposes, following a similar model to Netflix, which is that, hey, let's get in here, throw our weight around and spend, wait for it, big monies on... Um, <laughs> on movies and TV shows and original programming. And on the one hand, that's because, hey, the way to get sign-ups is to have shit that you can't watch anywhere else. But on the other hand, like, if Netflix were on the way at, on the way out, like if the quality of the program was go going down and down and down and down and profits were going down and down and down, Apple wouldn't be out here being like, oh, yeah, we'll spend $200 million on this Ryan Gosling movie, which they did yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a difference between like profitability and how much revenue you're taking in, though, isn't there? Because they, they, they invest much more into yeah. shows and movies to grow, so they get bigger and bigger, so they, but also, but they make like, less profit because they're investing the it's money. Like, so it's kind of a, doesn't really work in that sense to compare it. Because it's also like a weird side effect of the whole age of kind of like data and signups and registrations and stuff like that, and how Twitter was a service that was far from being profitable, it was actually running at a fairly significant loss year on year on year on year on year, and every year it ran at a loss. The value of Twitter as a website, as a yeah. company, whatever, went up and up and up and up and up because it had yeah. more users. And so whenever they turned on the money tap, whenever they went, <laughs> eep, 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 money, please. Um, <laughs> sorry if that hurt anyone's ears. They wow. knew they had the people to, for it. They knew they had the audience. For sure. But, well, there you go. Thank you for that comment, Mirko. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your insightful views. Interesting. Guys. Nice topic. Um, should we move on to a quick catch up for the uh, the last week and see what we've all been up to, Chris? Why don't, why don't you start us off? Oh yeah, let's 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 start off with me, boys, because what haven't I done in in the week uh, that's just passed? Everything. I haven't done anything, guys. It's been absolutely fucking horrendous. I will mm. tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. I played a little bit of Last of Us Part Two. Still haven't finished it. Nice. I know. Dead horse. Fucking leave it. Hopefully next week I'll have some other news to that. But. Um, on so what, when did we record the podcast we recorded the podcast thursday night because we had to um uh cover the xbox thing right yeah. uh but we also recorded uh an after dark episode which is our um patreon exclusive podcast so sign up and check that out um but we also recorded a bit of a an extra video didn't we we did yes Yes, for, for a new strand that we're hoping to launch, just just a pilot for now. Uh, and I've just been, I've been spending a lot of time doing that. And uh, for my sins, I've been 
spending some time polishing up my um, uh, my CV because it's I'm it's starting to get it's starting to get perilous, boys. You know, I'm uh, I'm glad that's how you finished that sentence because I didn't want to know what else you'd spent the last week polishing, Chris. Oh, I, every day polish. Yeah. You know, you've got to clean out the pipes, make sure everything's working. Circulation, I think they call it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but I don't know. It's uh, oh, and and then of, of course I streamed. Uh, I streamed on Monday night, which was my Monday night Dota, and and thankfully it wasn't a fucking complete shambles because let me tell you, I was after the previous week's Dota, I was ready to fucking throw in this whole fucking streaming tile. I was like, you know what, fuck it, I, I can't. You haven't had a, haven't had a good Dota run, have you recently? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the week before was decent, I think. Uh, but anyway, I thought you'd had two double like. Two, oh, yeah. was, I thought it wasn't. I thought it wasn't doing great at the moment. I thought like, it was like back to rough. back hat trick losses or something like weird like that. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was the previous week, but the week before that was, I think, two wins and one loss. Oh, okay, oh, cool. Okay. All right. So you yeah. you flipped it. You're flipping it. I flipped it and reversed it, but the constant flipping and reversing. Um, but yeah, I was kind of like, I don't know. I was just like really, really bummed out about the whole thing, and then come Monday, I was like, oh, do I even want to kind of get into this? forced myself to do it because that's the best thing you can do in terms of trying to you know maintain any kind of a schedule with something that's still early days i guess you just you know you you you, you stick it out you tough it out and um yeah it, it was great I, I had a really good time kind of uh, reinvigorated myself in terms of that and then actually jumped on the stream with you guys uh when was that on saturday, saturday. i think yeah saturday yeah. Was that Saturday? It was Saturday. It was. It was. So yeah. that was even before Monday Night Dota. So I don't. I'm getting confused. But yeah. <laughs> so the Saturday stream was cool because we played Fall Guys, Hell yeah. which is uh, kind of like got a got a gang beasts aesthetic, but it's almost like a Takeshi's Castle kind of knockout elimination round obstacle course thing. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, that was some kind of like a technical technical beta or something to kind of you know maybe test server capacity etc um we can talk about it a little bit later because i think it's coming up when we talk about playstation plus but uh it was fun for what it was would i go back to it probably not um but yeah we'll talk about that later i i, I, don't, I really don't have anything more to say so let's just swiftly move on before people start like switching off <laughs> <laughs> all right let me well let me i know that jamie's got a few things to run through so I'll, let me quickly run through um the few games that i played um in this last week i actually had a pretty good uh, a, a good little week for me because often i don't get a chance to play that much but i've also had uh, a lot of new games that i started playing um and i'm sure everyone will realize why but so i played um some cuphead um, yesterday, oh. which was um, which was very cool. We played a bit of co-op with the wife. Uh, one of the most infuriating <laughs> games you can possibly play on PlayStation. Um, on PlayStation because it, it came to PlayStation for the very first time. I think it was on the twenty eighth. So two days ago, I think it was released. Um, it's, I think it's fifteen pounds as well, which is very reasonable. I played some Cuphead before on Xbox, and I, I liked it. It's a good game. Um, it's, yeah, it's a great yeah, game. Yeah. You guys played some carp, I think, um, back back in the day, didn't you? As well, did you stream it as well for ATG? No, no, no. We 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 just played AT, in ATG offices because there was there was one stage where by our edit. So Jamie and I were sitting. I think we were sitting next to each other at that stage, weren't we, Jamie? No, we weren't. That was when you were in the oh, corner. We were on the opposite ends of the room. We were on opposite <laughs> ends of the room. That was probably why I came over. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're, to get some Chris time. Yeah, yeah, you know what it is when you when you're a kindred spirit, you know, and and you are torn asunder. Then you, you know the 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 wayward souls need to find each other. So. Yeah. Although then we played Cuphead and Co-op, and pretty soon we were torn sunder once again. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, not like that. But yeah, so we had this like uh, trolley next to us that we was like our <laughs> capture trolley that had a, a, a monitor and a whole bunch of consoles, and we just yeah, um, you know, come come five o'clock, Jamie would come over, we just like hash out some some Cuphead and. Man, that game is frustrating as hell, but it's... It, it is. It is frustrating. Well, I because I, I played a bit then when we had it in the office, because if you remember, um, we were going to an event where they wanted... Um, it was a speedrunning event. Yeah, was it um, Western Digital? Uh, it was some esports team. Fnatic? Yeah, we went to... That Fnatic sounds about bunker. right. That's where Fnatic it was, yeah. Bunker, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah, and, and, and I went... 
and t- and played along. And the one of the only reasons being that the first round um, game that you had to play. So the way that it worked is it was like a knockout thing. So half the people made it. I think made it through the first round. Then got to play Cuphead, but the first round was um, I Am Bread, and you guys had never played I Am Bread, and because I am sad enough that I had played I Am Bread, <laughs> I got put forward uh, to, to play along, played the I Am Bread, got through the first round. You did but really well, been, dude, in, the, in that one. Thank you, mate. But And then I'd been practicing the games that I needed to play, and I, I hadn't practiced much Cuphead, but um, we had to do a level and a boss on Cuphead to get through the next round. And unfortunately, somebody who sat down before me was very... I, I, don't, I couldn't decide whether this is inconsiderate or not or whether it's fair enough, but they had changed and remapped every button on the Xbox controller. Um, and not being an Xbox person, I... I wasn't, you know, with it enough to kind of figure out how to change everything back. And so I by accidentally basically unmapped shoot from Cuphead. So I couldn't shoot anything <laughs> and then had to run through the level and just kept dying. Um, and it was horrendous. But I, I like the aesthetic of the game and I like how it played. So I sort of decided that when it came to PlayStation to hop on. So I played a bit of that. Um, I also streamed Destroy All Humans on Tuesday night because that was a game I loved back in the day. And the Mega. remake came out. There you go, Christoph, rocking the Destroy <laughs> Human shirt. Um, a, gr- a very fun game with a, um, a really cool script. It's a lot of fun. It's not very challenging when it comes like technically, but it's a it's a cool old school game, and they've remade it from the ground up, uh, and it looks great. Like it looks great. It sounds good. Um, it's still fun to play. So I had a lot of fun playing that on stream. I think I will stream some more of it as well. Um, yeah, nice. That'd be cool to jump back on. Where, where but- do you stream it, Jonesy? I stream it on uh, Twitch at Super Show Jonesy. So if you want to check that out, please do head over there. Um, or if you don't want to watch me, you could watch Chris at Hot Panic or Jamie at Full Fat Jamie. So you, um, get onto Twitch and check us all out. Check out some streaming. And as Chris said, we do do some streaming together as well, which was which is pretty cool. And hopefully we do some more of that soon, won't we? With can, Steph, yeah, can, can we talk about that very, very quickly, right? Because so far this week, if we're starting the week from, from Monday... Uh, if if people were interested in seeing us stream, you could watch at least one of us stream every single day so far. Uh, yes, yes. And then That's on, right. s- yeah. on Saturday was the first time that we, well, not the first time, but uh, we, we made an effort where we got all of our cameras together on Jamie's stream for Fall Guys. Uh, we invited Steph as well, the original mayo sandwich. Shout out, Steph. Um, and... We, we, kind of, we kind of enjoyed it so much that we said we should try and do this a we should try and do this as like a a, a more regular thing and just rotate whose channel it's going to be on. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think I, that'd be. Yeah. I'm, I'm up for it. As soon as you guys said it, I was like, I'm into that. I'm I think totally the next one it. we said we might do is grounded, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Grounded, which was announced. I think, well, I think it was announced just on the Xbox thing. I hadn't heard about it before. I don't know if either of you it, guys yeah, have seen was, anything about it. It, it. it had been shown before. Yeah. Yeah, they've oh, been okay. shown before. That's how much attention I pay to Xbox. There you go. But looks looks cool. So we're going to stream some of that hopefully on Saturday. Um, so the last thing I played was some Observation, which was um, uh, on Game Pass. Funny enough, of our comment of the week, um, because Jamie had played some of it and said it was a very Jonesy game, and I played it, and it is wicked. I'm really enjoying it. So um, I'm Good. getting through Observation at the moment. Um, some people who don't know it's effectively like it's almost like a space odyssey 2000 or was it called 2001 a space odyssey yes, yeah. but you play from um what's it called how the robot how you play is from the how perspective but in this you're sam and uh you've got a an astronaut who's trying to do stuff and she needs to use you to help her sort of fix the station because it's been busted up and you don't know what by and so you're like an ai who can um, move around the ship with little drones and you can access cameras and systems and try and help her through a whole bunch of mini games. A very a very cool game uh, from Devolver Digital, which I've, I'm really enjoying. Man, Devolver, and, but that's Devolver, it. Devolver's doing some cool shit lately. Um, they are very cool shit. Oh, you, you did remind me, so sorry, going back to what have I done? I finally watched the Noclip Arcane documentary. I thought, oh, okay. for some reason, I thought you were about to say I finally watched The Notebook. <laughs> and I was about to be like, oh, hang on a second, like, what a rogue shout for the podcast. Like, uh-huh. yeah, but <laughs> I've, been, I've been searching for the perfect, r- I can't do your accent, I've been wow. searching for the perfect wow. rom com and I finally found it. Jesus you know, I've been, I've been yearning notebook. for some Ryan Gosling and. Uh, it's go. just because you heard you heard Jonesy say Ryan Gosling before. No, you said Ryan Gosling before. Yeah, Jamie's, Jamie's got Ryan Gosling you've, you've on the mind. You've done this to yourself, Jamie. I've got two and, things. And put... you, you, you uh, insulted me and my accent. How dare you? I thought we were friends. I thought we were kindred spirits. But you know what? I piss on you. Wow. Wow. 
I mean, yeah. that, is a, that is a theme for Chris as well. Pissing when he's not good. Uh, the theme that the pe- people at home don't know is that Chris gets off on that. So actually, it's a pleasurable act for him. This is a sign, like a positive sign. It's a good thing. Our relationship is on the mend. Uh, I don't think so, my friend. You can convince yourself otherwise. Uh, I've, seen a, I've, seen, I've seen a video that suggests otherwise. So. You're dead to me. Oh, wow. Okay, fair enough. Feelings mutual. Anyway, <laughs> tell, tell, us about the the tr- tell us about the notebook. Fantastic story. Great card. Mm-hmm. No, I don't fucking know. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, sorry, Jonesy. What else were you, what else were you saying? Um, Jesus, uh, you were about to say that you watched the Arcane documentary that you finally finally watched it. Yes, dude. Very cool. Very cool. That's all I have to say on that. Back to you. <laughs> Okay, so Jamie, let's hear from you. What have you been, what have like, been playing? Is it, is it Family Guy where they go to the weatherman? He's like, it's cold. It got me cold. Yeah, that's what we should do Chris's wrap-ups. Like, Chris, what do you think of The Last of Us 2 this week? It's gay. <laughs> Lesbians. I don't know. Just do one-word wrap-ups. That's my review of The Last of Us 2. One-word reviews. Yeah. Guys, I think we might be onto yeah. something here. Would, what would, what would be the one-word review for The Last of Us 2? Muscles? What? Uh, Dogs? Oh, wow. Uh, oh my goodness! Um, no, I, it'd have I, to be. I quite, I quite like what the what the that one Australian retailer did where know. they were, they changed the the box art and just said angry lesbian. I mean, no, she, they she, didn't. she is she is angry. She's very angry. She is angry, but you know, if mm. that well, to be fair, only only well, no, I don't want to say anything. In case <laughs> oh, oh, yep, spoilers, no spoilers here. Yeah, spo- um, suddenly everything I want to say about the last verse two is like spoilers. I can't yeah. say anything. Even for Chris's sake, we can't spoil it, even though he knows yeah. everything. Oh. Dot dot dot. Um, I've spent the last week working on my up and coming uh, business and sort of stocks and shares advice podcast. It's called Big Monies with two hands. <laughs> Um, no, um, I've also been doing a little bit of what Jonesy's been doing in that I've been hitting up Game Pass to get my fix. Um, the first thing I shout out is a game that you probably didn't think would get brought up again in a Super Show podcast, but turns out, here we are, Fallout 76. All oh, right, right. <laughs> yeah. you, you streamed something, didn't you, with Steph? So Steph was streaming over on uh, twitch.tv forward slash Technoovo. I was just in the game with him, and obviously he right. put the Discord audio through so he could hear me, but so I, didn't want the... to put, I didn't want to put clothes on, so I didn't have my mic or anything. <laughs> so <laughs> was the, the last time you'd played it when we played it at that preview? The, the, yeah, literally the last time I played any Fallout 76 was when I was trying to play an hour or two of the beta ahead of the infamous branded deal. Mm. Uh, yes, back on ATG. If only um, we'd have known. The, the beginning of the known. end, I think you mean to say. I mean, in many, in many respects, it was. Um, so, yeah, it, it feels a little bit risky invoking the good name of Fallout 76 again for that reason. But uh, do you know what? The reason I wanted to try it was because a lot of the updates they've been putting out, in particular, I think it was called the Wastelanders update, yeah. that added NPCs and quest lines and a lot of the things you'd uh, expect from a traditional Fallout experience. Those were all three up, free updates in sort of a No Man's Sky fashion. There weren't any, to my knowledge at least, paid expansions. So with it all coming to Game Pass, there was a part of me, and Steph fortunately agreed, that was just like, why don't we just look at this thing for once and for, once and for all and see what it's about? And I don't know whether you guys are going to be surprised or disappointed or whether you guys are going to say exactly what you think. But oh, this is... I'm, I'm genuinely right now, I have no idea which way you're oh, going to go, so I'm kind yeah, of hold excited. On, hold on. What, 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 what do we think he's going to... Which way is he going to sway? What, okay, so let, full disclosure, I did watch some of the stream. Um, well, that's, I didn't. That's cheating then. No, no, but no, because I I hopped out when you guys left the bunker. Oh, like, so quite geez, early on. Oh wow. Okay, yeah, that um, was early on. I think that's like the you're first gonna minutes, go, dude. No, no, it's not. It's a game. Like, like half an hour. Well, I was taking all my clothes off in the game, not in real life, and running around and like I could put. A, I was trying to beat people up, but it wasn't working. You know. Right. Um, okay. I'm gonna go that you feel like they have not done anything and it is rubbish. Hmm. Okay. Chris? I'm going to say that you thought it was fine. Split. Split Do you know what? Do you know what? It's interesting that you've both said that because I think it is exactly down the middle of what each of you said. (laughs) (laughs) On the one hand, Chris is right in that it is fine. On the second hand... When you go and play No Man's Sky right now, you know you are not playing the game that came out in June of whatever year it was. Yeah. When yeah, you go sure. and play Fallout 76 right now, there was a part of me that was like, I can't tell what's new. It did not scream out as like right. saying, hey, this is a game that came out like almost three years ago 
No, two years ago, excuse me. I two can't years. remember. I'm losing track of time. And was on fire, and they've been patching and updating and working on <laughs> since. Like, you'd think that they came out there at E3, and I know part of what they announced was a Battle Royale mode, which I haven't touched. But there was the whole, this whole Wastelanders update. Unless that's something you get to 10 hours in, I'm like, is... I, what? Okay. Yeah. So, and like, the, where is it? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, I don't remember, there aren't any NPCs that I had conversations with that I thought, like, wow, this is breaking new ground. This is like Fallout 5 now, all of a sudden. No, it but I think the point all. was that there were no NPCs before, and now you've got NPCs. I can't tell what's new, basically. Maybe yeah. I should have been more familiar with Fallout 76 at launch, uh, although I'm kind of glad I wasn't more familiar, <laughs> 76, more familiar with it at launch. Um, but the main takeaway is that it's fine. Like, when it's at its best, it kind of just feels like a Fallout 4 that you didn't play. Like a new environment, some yeah. new ideas, but very similar systems, very similar weapons, uh, some mechanics that I'm not super keen on, but, the, the, you know, the invariably they become a part of these sort of online survival type games. I will say that all the people I came across, high-level people, were all very nice. You can emote and you can give people stuff. Like, we came across one dude who was, like, level 200 and he gave Steph and I some water for no reason. It was like <laughs> stuff like that kind of sometimes yeah. makes you feel more positive about I, I the game than you would otherwise. Ever since that game launched, the, the one thing that I remember most is kind of because because the players had to fill in so many gaps. Yeah. It kind of like weeded out any of the like bullshit toxic players. And the only yeah. players that were left were like dudes that really fucking devoted and, and committed to making the game as good as it can be. So inevitably yeah. you're gonna run into people who's like, oh yeah, yeah, take whatever you need. Oh, how can I help you? This, that, that. For other. sure, for sure. And they want- they I'm, I, like I, I, don't think, I don't think that's true. I reckon I reckon Bethesda hired a team of people that they made <laughs> super high level and they just run around the game going, you have this, have a gun, have a weapon, have yeah. a whatever. So that you go, actually, do you know what? I quite this game's not yeah, what, what, what Jamie's not telling us is that uh, this level 200, he was actually a pedo. And was like, wow. Oh, have, some, have some water. Come over to my bunker. Actually, That's right. thinking you've about got it. A, you've got a young ne- looking face. His Bethesda name was Kitty Fiddler 69. Oh, I should have maybe taken that as giveaway. more of a warning sign. Yeah. Look, what I'll say is that there must be people wondering, because I was wondering at some point, whether or not Fallout 76 is worth jumping back into, either because you had a copy back in the day and haven't touched it for a while, Game Pass, or you actually considered buying it at some point. And my honest opinion is like, I don't see, personally, enough meaningful, tangible improvements and updates and changes to make this a significantly different game to what it was. And the key thing that I will pick on that puts me off, that makes me not want to go back to it now after four or five hours, is that the main quest, the quest that you start when you leave the vault for the first time, are still you going from terminal to terminal, voice memo to voice memo, and Mm. it all feels a bit sort of aimless and directionless. I have gotten to the point where I'm interacting with a few groups and NPCs, and you know, there are skill checks and things like that, but nothing about that game screams like that it's worth, like honestly, if you need that fix in your life, consider doing a second playthrough of Fallout 4. There's nothing you need from Fallout 76, right. in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Especially if you want story, things like that. Um, a bit disappointing, I guess. I think, I think um, you hit the nail on the head. If you want to play a Fallout game, just play Fallout 4. Dude, fucking get... If you've got a PC, like, play New 3 or New Vegas. Pump the settings up. Get some mods. Like, there are games out there that you can experience that kind of setting, those kind of characters, that style of writing, without playing Fallout 76. Like, yeah. I just don't know who the who the market is right now, and that's probably why it's on Game Pass. Yeah, um, oh, I, it's funny you yeah. said that. I was thinking the other day, like because I was convinced that probably uh, misguided thinking, but I was I was kind of thinking that the Xbox event would end with a one more thing. It would be uh, Bethesda's Starfield. Right. right, I think you yeah. said it at the time yeah. as well. And it's not its yeah. not that I'm disappointed that it wasn't there. I mean, it, it makes sense. It was uh, focusing more on first-party stuff. That's fine. Um, but it, it's, it's just a... You know what the thing is? I think I think as a gamer, you know, we, we give Bethesda a lot of crap, all right? And and they deserve it, fair enough, you know, especially recently. But there is, there is something missing when you don't have a Bethesda RPG in your life, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like it's, I, I know you mean, I kind of agree with that. There's a bit of magic with that jank that, you know, that, like, how many hours have you guys spent in, like, Skyrim? How, you know, you, you guys less so, but for me, for sure, how many hours did I sink into Fallout 4? It's an enjoyable time. Like, those guys do know how to make good games. Fallout 76 I, is I not a good game. I <laughs> definitely... I got a bit of that from Outer Worlds, I must admit. Like, it, it was that same level of, like, janky Bethesda-ness. Um, 
I got that fixed to some degree. Yeah. Uh, so it's nice that other people are doing it, at, at least in some capacity. Yeah. And yeah. maybe better as well, if 76 yeah. games go by. Yeah. Um, well. I guess another game I'll give a shout out to, again, <laughs> sort of with the whole Game Pass thing. I promise we're not sponsored. It just happened yeah. so that... Uh, oh, hold on. I'm, I, yeah, you, you carry on. There's, there's another comment that I've got to bring up because... Uh, Unless... Talking about, so we're not sponsored, unless Bill wants to give us a call, you know, and put his hey, PA on and uh, Billy drop G. some of that. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, money. he might not be too happy with the impression of him I did, like, at the top of the podcast, but if he can get past that and makes it to this point, I will shill for Game Pass for money because I'm doing it for free anyway. Like, what's the point? I look like a cuck, whatever happens. <laughs> oh, what do you, you have for us, Chris? Have you found it yet? Uh, or do you need more it time? was a comment. All right, hold on. I'm bringing it up. It Let's call it the uh, runner-up to Conrad from, of the Week. <clears throat> from Yeah, a runner-up from Thundersnow saying, new drinking game. Take a shot every time one of you says games pass in a podcast. <laughs> oh. of alcohol poisoning in eight minutes. It's, it's kind of true. <laughs> well, do you know what it is? Is that we are right now, I don't know how much of our demographic can relate to this, but we are unemployed gamers. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's, that's looking that's for the free line. games to play. Like, yeah, so when when games like the one I'm going to talk about next launch on Game Pass, it's like, yeah, I'm going to play it. It's the same reason, like, like not to look, to jump ahead again, but like, I'm going to play Modern Warfare Two Remastered this week because it's a PlayStation Plus title. Like, we're not we we cucks for whoever's giving us free shit. And that yeah. apply, again, that applies to any brands out there. We drink a lot of Monster, but I will drink a Red Bull if you're paying. Monster, um, you say? Oh, what's that? Sorry, Monster. Oh, um, Ultra Paradise? Um, what? Oh, what? Sorry, I, I uh, had this Monster get in my hand. Oh, no, hold yeah. on. Oh, no, I've, I've no. Uh, uh, we, oh, we would not there. accept any Pepsi sponsorship. Sorry. <laughs> well, it is the choice of a generation. PepsiCo. Do you know what the choice of a generation I made this week was? Yep. To play Carrion. Oh, okay. So this nice. was the other Games Pass game. You, this was the other Games Pass game. Yeah. So this is a new game <clears> from, <throat> I believe they're called Phobia Studios or something like that, which is very appropriate for what this game looks like. They made a side-scrolling shooter called Butcher a couple of years ago, that was like extremely hard and kind of like metally and gothic and and violent. Um, Carrion is. You guys might have seen it. It's the game where you be, basically play as the Blob. It's been referred to as a reverse horror game. So imagine a horror game where you are playing as the monster, stalking humans and going through ventilation systems and coming out and eating them. Right. Uh, so it, you're, you're sort of this big, you know, kind of gross, bloody red blob with lots of tentacles and tendrils coming off it. Kind of imagine, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail because if anyone hasn't played it, they should. If you imagine the last half an hour of Inside with more tentacles... Then right. you're kind of in the ballpark, and I guess cover in blood, which is kind of <laughs> a frightening image, but that's the game. Um, and so you're controlling this blob and making it through this sort of ambiguous laboratory kind of setting in a game that eventually starts playing out as something of a Metroidvania style game. So you're eating humans and you're accumulating, you know, mass, um, biomass or whatever they call it, and in turn, new abilities that allow you to access new areas and so on and so forth. Um, and I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Fine. That's, that's interesting to me because I watched you stream some of it yesterday and I thought it looked really cool. And when you <laughs> said, like, the, but the actual act of playing it is just kind of okay, I thought, okay, that's interesting because it means that it's a lot of maybe, maybe style over substance in some sense. To actually play it isn't quite as cool I, as I definitely, I definitely think, I'm glad you made that point because I definitely think for anyone that knows what this game looks like, there was for me a little bit of a disconnect between what it looked like in motion and what it felt like to play. And that right. disconnect stemmed from a few things. I, one thing I will say is that the movement itself, so all the movement in any direction, is all done for me on a controller on the left stick. And that stuff felt great. It wasn't even as floaty as it looks. Like all the tendrils and tentacles snapping out and grabbing bits of the wall, all very natural and um, that felt fine. What didn't feel as good is that you control one specific tentacle with on a controller the right stick to grab doors and gates and vents and kind of rip, th rip things off their hinges, grab humans and pull them towards you so you can eat them. That occasionally for me didn't feel quite as fluid as I wanted it to. It didn't snap to the things I wanted it to. Also, the eating is automatic. So you grab a right. human, right stick out, right trigger to grab them, pull them towards you, and the mouth just kind of like snaps and you kind of absorb them in a way that... I just never felt like I had the kind of 
direct control over the monster that I wanted to have to actually enact as much of the fun and often gruesome acts that I wanted to. And it never fell in terms of the feedback. I don't know if it's the fucking the vibration or whatever it was. It just never felt as satisfying as I wanted it to for some reason. Mm. Okay, cool. Um, the other thing I'll say is it was a difficult game to stream because this is a Metroidvania without a map. Uh, so <laughs> every time I'd look at chat for like 30 seconds, I'd come back and be like, what the fuck was I doing? What direction am I going? <laughs> um, but, you know, if you like the look of it and want to check it out, again, there's no reason not to uh, because, again, I'm not going to invoke the name of you-know-what again, but <laughs> there's a good reason to maybe check this out, even if you're only halfway interested. But I just felt like it came, dropped a little bit short of what I was hoping for based on previews and trailers, but not a bad game by any means at all. Yeah, Quite enjoyable. Huh, okay. Yeah, and uh, I guess moving away from uh, indie games and Game Pass and kind of into a game that hopefully will loop back around into our first news story. It has to, otherwise I'd just be talking about games for the next two hours. <laughs> uh, Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm still playing, and it is still good, if a little bit baggy and open-worldy in a way that makes me think I'm never going to fucking finish it. But clearly, um, I'm not the only person who bought it, Jonesy. No, indeed, mate, because... Thank you very much. Leading into the first news story, um, it came out this week that Ghost of Tsushima is the fastest selling new IP on the PlayStation 4, which is a pretty big sort of accolade for them to win. Um, I think so. In its first three days, it did 2.4 million um, buys oh. globally. Jeez, um, okay. Which is which is pretty sizable for a new IP, and the previous title um, that held that mantle was Horizon Zero Dawn, which was sort of heralded as an incredible game, and obviously now we know the sequel's coming and looks amazing. So it's, I didn't expect Ghost of Tsushima to sort of be up there on that kind of pedestal. It looked like a great game, but I was genuinely surprised with this. I think that's um, an uh, interesting statistic. I'm not surprised. I mean, do, do you remember that one that one E3? When was it? Two years ago, where PlayStation was like. Yeah, all we're going to show is uh, Spider-Man, Last of Us, Ghost of Tsushima, and Death Stranding. Yeah, when, yes. When Sony says, that's what we're putting our weight behind, because those are the only things you really need to know about, it, it's almost like you're being led to believe that, or, or you, you know, it's like Sony holding your hand going to the store and saying, these are the games you're going to buy. Uh, maybe, but I don't know. That's, I suppose that they were specifically pointing out certain games. It's not like they were going, these are the only games you can buy on PlayStation. Oh, but it no, you was, make it, you make Th a, Those were the last like big games that they had. <laughs> it's, it's mad to think that they were the, that we were waiting sort of for, like, it felt like for two years for those three games. Like yeah. They were talking about them and we were constantly, we were talking about them and we were really looking forward to it. And I think it's almost like Christmas, right? You're, you, the anticipation of the present is never going to be um, sort of fulfilled by when you actually unwrap it because your expectations are so high. Hold on, um, Jensi. I thought we weren't talking about Last of Us Party. I thought we were talking about Ghost of Tsushima. Oh. <laughs> Finish it and then you can talk about it. Um, so, um, <laughs> oh, it's thing. There, there is there is a slight little. Uh, let me just caveat this though, because like I said, it's two point four million sales globally, um, which is the um, the fastest selling new IP. But it isn't the yeah. big, the fastest selling when you consider sort of sequels, because The Last of Us Part Two, as you just mentioned, um, sold over four million in its first three days. Obviously, <sighs> outstripping that by a decent chunk. But because it's a sequel. Um, you know, haven't included it. But it's I not really included in that. Wasn't metric. that also the fastest selling PS4 game? I don't know. I would have thought I would not be surprised at all, but I didn't write that down if it was. So there you go. So you know better yeah. than I do. I don't know what you guys think to this though, because I would almost class Marvel's Spider Man, which also outsold it in its first three days at 3.3 .3 million buys, um, as being. It's sort of a new IP. You could argue yeah. that there have been Spider Man games on the PlayStation before, but this to me felt like a. Yeah. a new outing. I'm, I'm kind of with from. you that it, it's probably a new IP in terms of it's a new direction and a reboot, but yeah. Spider-Man itself is an IP. It's it's like a known quantity, right? So that's probably, Very true. It's probably yeah. what they're getting at. Because you're almost less talking about whether something is a direct sequel and more talking about is this game coming out with any baggage that would theoretically drive people to buy it, which yeah. Spider-Man does, even if it was a new developer and a new take on that uh, property. No, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, fair enough. As I suppose it also has a whole audience behind it if it already exists, so it's kind of playing off of that as well. Um, but yeah, that was that was effectively the point here. That was the news item. We haven't really got much else to talk about Ghost of Tsushima. Um, there, there is one I, other thing, Jonesy. Go on. You'll make the quartering and what that 
Dillhold said and did. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I think his point was fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I follow the, um, uh, I watched the court ring on YouTube and one of the um, videos he uploaded re- recently was effectively saying that Ghost of Tsushima was outselling um, The Last of Us Part no, 2. No, no, hold and on, hold on, Jonesy. No, come on. You, you're not doing the court ring justice yet. It was more like on. Ghost of Tsushima smashes that lesbian cuck story Last of Us Part 2. He, def- he definitely didn't tile it that. It was maybe a bit more <laughs> um, incendiary than I made it sound. Uh, but yeah, then it turned out that actually um, that was only, I think it was only in Japan was uh, Ghost of Tsushima outsold Last of Us yeah. Part 2, mm. which is not surprising at mm. all. Yeah, <laughs> um, that. Go figure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ex- to be expected. Um, but... Hey, we need to hurry up and do the spoiler cast of The Last of Us Part 2 because I am, I'm still super right, psyched make, to talk about that game. Make feel as bad as I really No, no, feel. not trying to make you feel Jesus bad. It took, me, it took me a long time to finish it as well, so I am, I'm completely on Did board you see, with them. Um, there was one comment on the last, uh, last week's podcast that was like really serious, like, actually, by this point, there's just no excuse. You're just not, it's just not good enough. <laughs> like, one guy was dead yeah, serious about how yeah, I did see that. Wasn't it like, you're a gaming podcast, how could you, how could you do this? Yeah, like, so one, his, one guy was really offended, just the very idea that Chris hadn't yeah, I'm, finished I'm, it yet. Yeah, I'm sorry that, uh, you know, I, I have a life with other uh, responsibilities taking over that I can't just sit in front of my PlayStation all day. Well, well, so know, his, his point was that you should, there's no excuse to not play two hours a day of a game, and if you play two hours a day, then it should only take you two weeks to finish the game because he said that and I was like when you say like that it kind of sounds reasonable to say you could play two hours but now right let me just let me give you a little insight into my <laughs> life um, and this is going to be this is very similar for Chris I imagine yeah. I wake I get woken up at half past seven by two crazy little men yeah but they, hold on Jones, they, that means you've got more hours in a day to play games right no, Bingo. because I then I then was I looking wake up after at three them. and I play eight. So uh, <laughs> back to you. I then was looking after them solidly until half past seven at night when I would then put them down to go to sleep, having looked after them the entire day. It would then take me to half past nine to actually get them to go to sleep. At that point, I've got to do any work that I have for the rest of for that day, like writing scripts, sorting out stuff for the podcast, doing other things, you know, editing other videos, etc., etc., etc. To then fit two hours of gameplay every day, I'm like, you are a maniac. Yeah. I could, there's no way I could physically have fit it in. Well, I, I, I messaged you guys earlier this week and I was like, guys, I'm, I'm feeling fucking down because I haven't had any time to play this game. And I'm not going to, because all intents and purposes, I wanted to have it done by this podcast so that we could slightly talk about it here, but then actually record that spoiler cast for the patrons. But, yeah. and it's just like, I, I don't know what's happening. I'm so tired. I don't have time. It, you know, like everything's just kind of getting away from me, and that's just the fact. You know, that's that's how it is. You it was um, interesting actually because off the back of The Last of Us Two, Jason Schreier t- um, tweeted uh, that games these days are too long, um, and there was quite a funny reaction because a lot of people uh, replied to him and basically saying. Um, what are you talking about? You're an idiot. Um, not many, but then there was a lot of people saying, you're absolutely right. The Last of Us Part 2, because everyone took it as Last of Us, that he was talking about Last of Us yeah. Part 2. Um, and I want to say that Troy Baker uh, even actually then re- um, t- retweeted it with a comment. Yeah. Troy, effectively Troy saying, Baker's response was the fucking worst, dude. That's like... <laughs> That motherfucker's so cringe these days. I don't know what's happened to him. Well, it was a, it was like, a every poem, time I go on his Twitter, it's like he's got a black and white picture of himself in profile, and his bio is just like storyteller. I'm like, go fucking suck a big tree. You're fucking you know what? playing. Ever, you're ever fucking playing the, the fucking incredible hat, fucking Hulk in the Avengers tree. Like, fucking get out of my sight, you fucking weirdo. <laughs> I like well, him. So dude's a good actor, but fucking that shit. Like, the, just anyone look up the response to the tweet that Jones is talking about because he posted some weird quote about. The, the 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 critic, like the yeah. cri- the critic doesn't know. Blah, blah, blah. Like you suck a fucking bullsack. Uh, I think can the, I, the can quote I just, was hold on, on. Jonesy, Can I just interject yeah, that? Um, Troy Baker, I know you're listening because you're a huge fan, <laughs> and, and we're actually huge fans too. So come on to our podcast as a, as a guest, and you know. I hope we are. We are big fans, but his his response was very cringe. He's a fan. He's a fantastic actor. I just think sometimes his online persona nowadays is a bit cringe. Yeah, I think I think you can like a person's body of work and then just disagree with the person. Yes. To be fair, to be fair to him as well, Jason Schreier did it as like a. He said that he did it as like a joke, almost like a to see how many responses he could get from like a joke. It was a social experiment, guys. Almost, almost. But he did say it was like it was meant sort of tongue in cheek, um, and then to sort of 
take the piss out of Troy Baker. But if you just if you went on Twitter and you saw that from someone of his status, you wouldn't assume that he was just making. Okay, but a hold joke. on. What you, Troy Baker I kind of give so him an out for saying. I found it. I found it. I kind of give him okay. an out. So, oh, go on. Can, can we do can this? We hear it? So yeah, basically, it. Jason Trier's tweet was, and um, in entirety, in the video- voice. Oh, I'm not doing his voice as well. <laughs> because every voice you're asking me to do is nasally nerdy American dudes. Like, just imagine my Bill Gates voice and just put a video game bent on it. I don't know. Um, so Jason Schreier's tweet was, it, like, in full, just said, video games are too long. Didn't even put a yeah. full stop in there. Just video games yeah. are too long. Troy Baker quotes that tweet and says, I'll just leave this here. And it is a picture of a quote oh. from Theodore Roosevelt. And I'm going to start reading this and I want either of you to shout when you want me to stop reading it because you've lost faith in humanity. The stop. quote is, it is, not the cr- it is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs. This is too much. Who this comes too short much. again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. That is what Troy Baker said in response to a tweet that said, video games are too long. Like, I'm sorry. I'm I'm not going to apologise or retract any comments about how cringy it is because if you're that self-serious, like if you're referring to the being in the arena with your face marred by dust and sweat because you put on Lycra for six months, (laughs) like, get get out my fucking... Get out, get off my feed. Get off my feed. Okay, but hold on. Yeah, in a way, I, 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 I... I I hear stuff like that and I see his response to stuff like that. And it just makes me want to be Troy Baker, right? (laughs) Just live in his head. No, because the dude must have such a big dick. (laughs) Honestly, it must be so fucking big that he can wrap it around his body and shove it up his own arsehole. Blimey. I, 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 I don't know. Okay, I think off the back of all the criticism that Last of Us Part 2 was getting, off all of the sort of the insane shit that was going on, after all of the people complaining about it, to then see someone like one of the top uh, commentators in the industry to come out and say that... I like that was because it was a nothing tweet. Like you said, there wasn't even a full stop. It was obvious. It, when you think back, it was obviously a, like tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. But I imagine if... To see that, I can imagine him having like a negative reaction and to kind of be like, yeah. "Fuck off!" But the dude. the quote that he the quote that he used is ludicrous because then you're almost like, is he comparing himself to like a gladiator or to somebody who fought a war or to exactly. someone who like, like he literally yeah, invo- exactly, invokes yeah. again to quote the direct quote. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by <laughs> dust and sweat and blood. Like, I'm not being funny, but hey, let's break down the professions of the two dudes in question. One of them is an investigative, ju- investigative journalist who fucking starts stampedes on companies that gets genuine, like, sexual harassers and abusers ousted out of the companies. The other pr- pretends to be people, pretends to be the Incredible <laughs> Hulk. Like, which, which one has their face marred in dust and sweat? Neither of them, but one slightly more than the other. Like, it just he's just taking himself a bit too seriously. And I'm sure it's just like a social media thing. Like, it's part of the storyteller vibe. It's part of the black and white picture vibe. But, like, great actor. But I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that. I don't know. I, can't, I don't, like, something about it is a bit weird to me. <laughs> well, look, if he ever Let's- listens to this, I'm going to be mortified, but... <laughs> he probably you're, you're gonna tell him that that was old Jamie. Don't mean it anymore. But look, okay, <laughs> exactly. right. We've, let's I've move changed, on to the next news story, yeah. um, which which also includes a bit of Troy Baker. Um, not you know directly, but by proxy, because um, we had the second Marvel Avengers War Table where oh. they've talked about uh, everything that we're going to see from that game, and actually, what specifically with this one, what we're going to be able to play and see in the um, the beta that's coming in two weeks. I guess it's about two weeks. The launch of the beta uh, yeah. will be. You'll be rippling. Um, go on, you look like you want to say something, Chris. You pulled up no, the face. Just, just doing the maths for you, mate. Yes, it is two weeks. Is it about two weeks? Um, <laughs> so it's the it was 14th, kind of a warning. It? Oh, well, wait, I think the initial when, one when is the, the beta seventh. starts. The beta yeah, starts, yeah, seventh? no, in a week. So in a week, um, it, it only comes to PlayStation first. Um, so we'll get into actually when, when they actually are doing the release because it's sort of a rolled out release um, for a little. Uh, I think it's what it's about a week long or two week long time frame. Um, but they have sort of announced this all encompassing, really broad view of the game actually um, beta, which sounds 
I okay, I was very cynical about this, and I sort of said to you guys before the pod that I originally thought the reason they were doing it was to kind of tie people into the game, make people want to be able to play the game, and so they would buy the pre-order on PlayStation just because they wanted to hop in and play the game early than anybody else. Um, and a lot of people said I was an idiot, which I kind of now agree with, because <laughs> because who's gonna who's gonna pay sixty dollars or fifty dollars to play a game one week early? Um, and actually, now from what what we saw yesterday, it genuinely looks like they're trying to get it out there to get into as many people's hands as possible to show them um, not just a beta in the sense of here's a tiny fraction of the game that you can play, which often happens, but here is a broad spectrum of what you're going to be able to experience in the game, what it actually is, the different characters you're going to be able to play as, the individual story elements, the co-op sections, the um, the sort of um, hollow room training simulator sections that they've got so let me quickly run through a few of the things that they've they've told us we will be able to play when the beta comes out um because they have sort of these hero stages which are um single player sections i think there's going to be two of them in the beta where you're going to be able to play as kamala khan who i'm not going to lie it looks like one of the shittiest characters i've ever seen from a comic book <laughs> Her, pa- her power is big hands so <laughs> you know what, what was it uh, money makers <laughs> yeah, big, 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 big money, money. Big, big money, big money. Big she's monies. got big money. She's got big money. She said, "Like she's a fine character, but when they show her power and it's big, stretchy hands and legs, I'm like, yeah, it's just a bit okay. goofy, isn't it? It's like fucking like something that you'd expect to see on like a Hanna Barbera fucking cartoon channel or some shit." I'd never heard of her character, and then to sort of spearhead the the Avengers game with her seems super weird to me like it's because they keep pushing her and they keep talking about her and they but it's fine because she so the idea behind the game is she effectively rebuilds the Avengers after the events which kind of destroy them um that you do get to play at the very beginning of the game and then she is the impetus for the whole game to come back because she goes around and sort of rebuilds the Avengers if you like the other playable character is going to be the Hulk which I think is a much more um uh, expected um mm. thing to to yeah. be able to do because would Hulk you is, would you guys rather be jerked off by the Hulk's big hands or Kamala Khan's big cartoony hands? Well, she can have small hands, so maybe yeah, just go I, small I hands. I didn't say Kamala small Khan. hands, Jonesy. I said big hands. Hold on, hold on. Because how old is she? Is she a, like a less not? Because she might be a teenager. She is Ms. Marvel after all. Let's you know. Let's not go down that. Hey, road. Are you saying hey. you don't want to make her Mrs. Marvel? Is that what you're saying? Oh. I'm, I'm saying she might be 15, in which case I don't want anything no, to do with the conversation. She, no, come on. 18. So Kamala Khan canonical age. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay, okay, Google, can I fuck? No. Oh, wait, no. I shouldn't have. Okay. I didn't actually. Okay, wow. I actually. Oh, yeah. I actually, I, actually, I actually Googled it and we need to move on very quickly. <laughs> oh, not, I will I'm still not, be I'm not, here. I'm not even joking. We need to move on. I will still be here next week. You guys are both getting cancelled. But one of the cool oh things about God. the hero sections oh, no. of the. <laughs> <laughs> One of the cool things about these hero sections in the beta is that you get to play two sort of very different oh, um, environments as well. One is a um, frozen tundra uh, in Russia, and I think the other is um, I actually don't know. I can't find where I'd listed the other one. Anyway, the Dansk. Yeah, moving on. The the Dansk. Is it? Oh, no, it's a, a, no, it's a joke. Yeah. Oh, from Warzone. Yeah. Go, oh, go, yeah. Go go fucking lag, fucking hell, boys. Sorry, it's been when too long. When is that new fucking Warzone. season going to start? Like in a couple of weeks, I don't know. Oh, Pretty soon. Fuck's sake. As soon as this but, one ends, you know, go and check the countdown timer. So, four player co op in the Marvel Avengers game from the beta. You're going to get to play as Kamala Khan again, Hulk again, uh, Iron Man, and Black Widow. You're going to be the four playable characters. Nice. Um, but yeah, really just wanted to talk about this because it actually looks like they are. They're doing a lot in that beta and they're really putting it out there for people to play all the different versions. Oh, sorry, one thing I should say is they've also announced the first DLC character, which is going to be Hawkeye after the game Hawkeye. releases. So, Hawkeye. The, 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 I don't the get that. The dullest fucking Avenger ever and he's the first DLC. Hey, you got money to, to spend? Buy this fucking super boring character. Come on. <sighs> the only thing that worries me... Oh, that, so the that, other that, thing should be t- like, that should be like, hey, thanks for logging on. Here's Hawkeye. <laughs> you start with him he's a starting Jesus. character him and Black Widow the ones with no powers yeah. should be the starting characters uh, one thing I also forgot in the, the beta the Hulkbuster features which is quite cool um, you're going to get to play as a Hulkbuster for a bit okay I'm not saying it is because I actually think this game's going to be alright one thing that worries me a little bit is the things they've said are the most exciting about this game yeah. like characters are going to be in it things that are going to appear characters like Hawkeye being DLC Kamala Khan who I've never heard of being in it um, 
as like a main character. It reminds me a little bit of the Star Wars, Star, sorry, Star Trek video game where they kept talking about the Gorn and everyone was like, I fucking love the Gorn. And it was a Gorn. Like, and it was you, a heaping pile of trash. You bring so up this video game more than anyone I've ever known in my entire life. Like, who? I, I was why, so let down. I'm a Trekkie and I was so Star let down. Trek game. Like, I don't know anyone else that was let down by the Star Trek game. <laughs> I was let down. I was let can, down. You, can Most, I tell you something yeah. fucking weird about. Maybe four days ago, I was actually thinking about Jonesy and how upset he was about the Gorn because <laughs> the they, they, had that, they had that like Comic Con at home where they they revealed a whole bunch of um, Star Trek projects, and I was like, Jonesy's fucking gonna lose it because the, what what if the Gorn is in it? It was because it was the PR. The way the PR went surprised me because they kept talking about something as someone who likes Star Trek that I didn't give a fuck about. And I was like, does anyone want this? And they did it. And the reason the Marvel thing did it to me was because the bad guy they talk about, I've never heard of either. But then I'm not a Marvel comic book guy, so maybe that's why. Who is the bad guy? I can't even remember who it is. Um, it's a bu- guy Mo- with a big Modoc? brain. Modoc. Oh, Modoc. Oh, Modoc, right. Yeah, yeah. That was quite a big deal, actually, revealing him as the baddie. Was it really a big deal? Or was it like mm. a big deal? I'm doing air quotes. A big deal. I, big I monies. Think, <clears throat> is yes, it the Gorn all over again? No, is it I, the I Gorn think, all I over think it's again? It's a big deal for Marvel fans. I think for. Okay. But when I say Marvel fans, I don't mean like the movie Marvel fans. I mean like fucking comic book comic book fans. But beyond okay. that, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't so know what are you guys thoughts anyway? What are you thinking about the beta? Because I, I, I want to think- know if you're going to get on it. I'm thinking that if it wasn't for you guys, I would not touch this game. But because I know. Right. That we're going to be like, hey, we can play it in four-player co- oh Yeah, f- fucking sure. I'll, I'll, it, it, it's the equivalent of a fucking get ready to have another shot of vodka. It's the equivalent of a fucking Games Pass game for me, even though I've got to pay for it. Because you guys are going to be on there, so of course I'm going to be on there, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, mate, come stream it with us. Maybe it'll be cool. Maybe it'll be cool. And it's what, what I said the last time we kind of covered it in saying that maybe the reason they're showing off all of this stuff and saying like, hey, look, look how much is in the beta. Like all of the fucking at least one slice of all of the things you're going to be fucking doing is because they're po- they're, yeah. they're confident in it and they want to they want people to come around but a part of I've, me- and I've come around to your way of thinking because of how confident they seem to be in it which yeah. is which is good guess- man I'm I'm glad yeah I, I suppose that's the main takeaway right is that I feel like no matter how much more of that gameplay I watch no matter how much more I see of it in action my opinion on what it looks like and my ability to figure out what I'm going to think of it when I play it, doesn't change. It's the fact that there is kind of an element of confidence in the extent of the rollout, the amount of content they're putting in the beta, and how many platforms and people they're rolling it out to. Because again, that final weekend, which is the one closest to the release, whatever it is a week or two before the release, it's an open beta across three different platforms. With, as you said, Jonesy, the the sort of a Golden Gate Bridge sequence, a further two story missions, and then something like five multiplayer missions. You don't put that much shit out there for everyone, for free, completely open beta, unless you're trying to <coughs> make a statement or something, right? Absolutely. And, hey, because if that falls flat, if it's bad or doesn't work or something like that, that's a fucking, that's the worst kind of PR disaster. Because yeah. that's people with a hands-on experience saying, I don't want to play this. Um, so... On the one hand, you, you, you've got to be careful with, to what extent you think like that the way they're promoting a game suggests that it's actually going to be good, but it certainly comes off as confidence. Yeah, I, I, and I think it's that's an inspiring thing, right? You don't ever want to hear that they've um, that they've put all sorts of uh, agreements down and no one can review a game until the day it comes out, etc., 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 because it just makes you worry yeah. about but, do but they believe do, in their do title. We, do we really foresee a time when the game releases? when we are addicted to it because it is so good. And it's like, you know what, fucking, we're eating our hats because this game is fucking great. Like, is there a possibility for that in this game? Or is it more just a case of like, it'll always just be okay, but what makes it is any fucking multiplayer because you play with your friends. I think that's it. I'm, to me, it looks like the sort of game that you can, you over the course of six months, a year, whatever, you hop in and hop out as different friends who've got it say, I play as Thor, I play as Hulk, I play as whoever. Um, 
let's hop in and play it together. And then you better believe that as they roll out those DLC characters, one of the big money spinners is going to be people waiting for their favourite character to appear so that they can get on it. And then they've got to invest in the game and the time to put in to unlock stuff and to get those skins and everything to to make the character what they want to make. But I think it looks like it's going to be a good time. And I can see myself playing it, not in like one go, but sporadically over a long time, I suppose. Yeah, and maybe that is the goal. Maybe the goal is to make it at a base level, the entry level, a fundamentally fun experience so that it's the the extra bells and whistles that draw people back in, exactly like Jonesy is saying. So everyone knows that the base game, the combat or whatever it is, is fine or fun maybe even, but it's about saying, holy shit, they just added this environment or this location or this enemy or this hero to the game. Yeah. Let's all jump back in. Because that's a bigger draw than a lot of other like online kind of I forget the word like the the kind of games as a service games have is they add new content but it's all completely new unless you do like Ghost Recon and bring Sam Fisher to the party what Avengers can do is is it can add new content that everyone already recognises yeah Uh, and you know that could be a, a USP I don't know the day they um, they reveal Deadpool as a uh, DLC character. Sure. They've got yeah. me. They've got me. And then you're selling Deadpool skins all of a sudden. It's like you're making a fucking fortune. Yeah. I, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I think it'll it'll make them big bucks, this game. For sure. But that's we'll that's see, not yeah. what we're asking here. We're asking about the game. I don't know. True. It's, it's, True. It's, 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 it's truly one of the more fascinating games and rollouts for a game that has been around for a very long time. Yeah. Given, I think, given how weak it seemed to be with the PR at the beginning, it's it's quite interesting to see how far they've come, because I think we were all nervous when we saw that like melty face Thor, and we kept seeing the same slice of the game again and again and again. They suddenly seem to have said, "No, guys, go go mental, play loads of this game," which is which is interesting. Um, so, okay, let me quickly give the dates for the uh, beta releases, yeah. so people can know when they can get their hands on it, because the first beta, which is the PlayStation 4 pre-order, um, that'll be 7th to 9th of August, which is in just over a week. You've then got the Xbox and the P- Xbox One, sorry, and PC, which is the weekend after that, 14th and the 16th of August. And the final one that we were talking about, where everyone can play it, to- totally open, is the 21st to the 23rd of August, which is only um, like three weeks away. So hmm. don't have to wait long until you can get your hands on it and see what it's actually like for yourselves, which is kind of cool. Having said all of that, and talking about games that I suppose are coming, um, but you can play for free, let's talk about two games that you can play for free completely on PlayStation this month, because the PlayStation Plus games for August are Fall Guys, which we were talking about, um, we played a bit um, last week, or this week, and Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, the campaign is coming to PlayStation as well. A pretty cool week. It is. A pretty absolutely. cool month. It, it, that's that's a, a decent uh, showing from PlayStation. Although, although, Fall Guys, it's it, it's interesting because it's a great case study, right? Because that game is not out yet. Or maybe it is out now. But when we played it on stream, it wasn't out yet. It was that technical test. Um, mm. And it was fun for sure. And it had kind of, the battle pass was in there so you could see what the battle pass could be. And that's obviously where they're going to try and make their money from, from that, from skins, etc. But I just don't see the point of any of it, fellas. The the game, the game as it st- as it stood when we played it, I don't think is good enough to play beyond a day. Personally, I just don't <sighs> think that there's enough variance or or ideas in that game. Like like I'll, I'll, I'll probably I'll, I'll hop back in because it's free and just to see what the full game looks like. Um, because because yeah. obviously technical the technical we played. Uh, potentially had a lot of stuff taken out and was only trying to show you a certain number of um, I, I, stages. I would, I would put money on it's exactly the same. Yeah, but yeah, very possibly. I mean, it's so close to the day that yeah. when it, people can play it on PlayStation, it would, does seem likely. Yeah, like don't get me wrong, like it's it's fun and you can have you can have a blast with your friends. But the problem is that they we we spoke about this on stream, but they haven't really thought about in in a game that you can hook up with four of your buddies as a team and participate together in this game. They haven't thought of any way of actually making you feel like you're a team. We were just these four separate entities that just happened to be grouped together. Yeah. But, but and so we'd be playing, and let's say I'd I'd lose out in the first round and not progress to the next round. 
I'm just sat there chatting to you guys, which is not, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's not like you can converse with me because you're focusing on the game. So therefore I'm sat out. And if they had some kind of a thing where maybe if I'm out and I could somehow still affect the game, or maybe if there was just a little bit more thought put into how teamwork can happen, uh, we started seeing a lot of the same uh, levels over and over again. If there was like a voting thing, just there was so much they could do that was almost like conceptually should just be surface level ideas that they just didn't implement. And I think it's just, it's, it's, it's a shell of a good idea. That's the only, that's it's the way I would describe it. I wonder from what you said, um, interesting, I wonder if one of the things you'll be able to buy, like put real money into, is um, buying like a an outfit or something that you and you, all of your team would get that makes you look uh, similar. So let's say you go, oh, you want, because um, oh, I think in the in the technical demo, they had um, a werewolf, werewolf skin. Yes. And you could see the other, <clears throat> other animals you could unlock. So maybe you spend, you, the idea is that a team would spend money so they can all look like a, I don't know, a llama. And then you go, oh, there's the llama team. But I still can't see Yeah, but okay, I still so can't Jonesy, see people so putting real money that. into it. You do that. You'd sink the money in the llama team, okay? Llama, dama, ding dong, whatever. And then you play <laughs> the game, and two and of then your you're guys out. don't go past the first round. Yeah, so yeah that's but that to me. You, so. you, you, you play Warzone and two people die in your first encounter. Yeah, but, but the point is... Two people are playing, two people are uh, spectating. Yeah, but the, the point is that the so in war okay warzone is a good example in warzone when you drop into warzone all four people are playing as a team for a common objective whereas so in other words whatever i do could affect yeah. you so if i die it's a detriment to you in the team right because a yes, you've got yes, to try yes, and yes. revive me or yeah. you've got to try and go it on your own L like, let's say for a team of four and let's say two of your teammates die that's a direct detriment to you so what you're going to do is you're going to try and revive them there's that gameplay dynamic, that, that team dynamic that comes out from that kind of a thing. Whereas in yeah, this one, what do you care if I'm gone? It, it doesn't I, I, impact I, I, I you don't. positively or negatively. Like there's nothing- But that's not, the game, that, that's not the game they're making. You're criticizing the game for not being a different kind of game. What I'm saying is they're pushing it as this kind of like team thing when it's not a team thing. I, dis I disagree. I think they're pushing it as a casual thing, as a party thing, as a laid back thing. I don't think they're pushing it as like a team cooperative experience. There's been nothing to suggest, for my money at least, that there's any kind of like work together element to all of this. I think that's where they are wrong. It would be like, it would be it like if Takeshi's Castle was real and us four enlisted for it at the same time. Like we're doing it together, we're going there but you're together, all we're doing the same shit. But technically speaking, yes, <clears throat> if Steph gets knocked out in the honeycomb maze, I benefit. I'm more likely to get to fight <laughs> the emperor at the end. See, what's weird is I, I actually agree with both. I agree with both of you in, in oh, some surprise, sense. Surprise, surprise! Ale down the middle, <laughs> Alex down the middle, Jones. Alex the fence, Jones. <laughs> um, I think, Chris, I think you make some good points. And if you look at Warzone, like Jamie said, this isn't Warzone, it's a different type of game. But one of the things that keeps people, I think, going back to Warzone is the fact that you can buy back in your friends um, when they get out. You can go and you you, know, you can watch that game and I can watch you guys play it and I can know that when you get a certain amount of money, you can buy me back in. Interestingly, in Warzone, they also added in the jailbreak mechanic, which suggests that if you're watching, you have a chance of you being brought back yep. in anyway. Yep. Um this game is obviously not, it's not trying to be that, and it wouldn't work if you could bring people back in because of the way the numbers work. But almost from a, maybe a psychological standpoint, why am I going to sit, um, like, so this, if I don't make it through the first round um, in Fall Guys, then I'm just going to quit out the game. I'm not going to watch anyone else play um, for any length of time. And once I've, if I've got out in, say, three first rounds, then I'm just going to shut the game down and I might not play it, you know. Um, and if I am playing with a team, which as you said, Jamie, don't think necessarily is what they've gone for then it becomes a bit odd because it is a solo person thing i mean you can watch your team well you, let me see you can't even watch your team um when you die you don't automatically spectate a team yeah, member. Goes you spectate random. anyone yeah yeah um, th that that was a strange choice i will agree that with that 100 percent. but what i think when we played it one thing we said was if they had more of a a team mentality behind it, so more team-based games yeah, but where you could play against other people. I 100% get where you guys are coming from, but I, again, I think the issue here is we're criticising the like this game, Fall Guys, for being something it's not. Like, as soon as you put a co-op element in there, th it's a different game. Well, there is co-op element already. Is well, like there's there's team-based stages. No, there, there, then, no, so they there obviously is, have that in no mind. There, well, you see, I guess there are team-based stages, but those team-based stages are like... That's not co-op. 
Well, they, well, they are in the sense of you have one team who you're a green team and you're against the yellow and the red team. I get what you mean in that it's not co-op in the sense of traditional sense, but they obviously have had the idea to have co-op, like, uh, team-based I, 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 sections. I just, I just think we're talking about a, a different game. I think we're talking about a game they haven't yeah, made. I, I, I don't think no, so. No, I, I, I agree. Think, I think we're talking about two different sides of the same game. So I, I don't... like. They never intended this game to be a single player, and fine, maybe they didn't necessarily intend it to be purely co-op. But the fact is, co-op exists, and 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 they've catered for certain co-op things, like Jonesy has said, where some of the levels, it, it, it's a co-op thing. But it, it just, it's just, I I, 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 I do, don't I, I don't think it's a good game as a co-op game, and I don't think it's all that interesting of a game as a single player experience either. See, if funnily, funnily enough, on that latter point, I agree with you in that like I had a good time when we played it. I want to pick it up on PlayStation Plus and have another go at it. If you ask me, do I want to sit on my own on my couch with like no, oh, no party chat or anything again. like that? Fucking hell, what is this? Time. Yeah, you frozen. Time out. Time out. Yeah, you what have frozen on? for me. <clears throat> you're in this pose. Yeah, you're, well, you're doing the thinker. On? Sorry, boys. How are Sorry, boys. Wait, well time, I'm, so. I'm dead again. Are you you're back, back. You're back. You're back. You're back. You're back. Hold on. Hold on. It's still. It's still kind of doing something. <laughs> it's thinking. Catching up with itself. Talk. Talk. Hello. 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 Test. 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 Yeah. I don't know what his name is. Christoph. My, my drives back, are not, My drives are not full. Yeah, I'm back. Carry on. Sorry. Okay. So you right. were you were making you yeah, just started making your say, point. What. A, what I will say about that last point is that if you were to ask me whether I want to sit on my couch and play this game on my own with no party chat and just every time I get knocked out, just match make, match make, match make, I kind of don't. Um, that, and that is one thing I will say kind of as a negative because then you get into the kind of the discussion of, okay, that means if I want to play it, I want to play it with friends. And then we get into this discussion where I'm playing with friends, but I'm not really playing it with friends. Yeah. There's definitely something there that's a little bit strange, but I can't quite get fully on the whole bandwagon of this game's not good because it's not a, the uh, this other kind of game. Like the, they, <laughs> they've they've made a game that by definition is a, like everyone gets eliminated until there's one person left. That can't be co-op. Well, it can, no, not not in that sense, no. But then, okay, I think you're being a little bit unfair though, because I think to say, well, that's not the game they've made. That's like someone making a football game, making the ball pyramid shaped, and then people saying, why don't they make the ball round? And go, well, that's <laughs> not the game they've made. It's a game with a pyramid ball. Like I think what we're saying is if the whole point is that the pyramid ball is like intrinsic to the idea of the game. Then that is an irrelevant point. Yeah, but I, I agree. But I don't, I don't think the. I don't think the single person aspect of this game is intrinsic to the game because, like I said, they've got um, team-based sections. What is, what is everyone saying about this game? Oh, thank God, it's Takeshi's Castle, the game. As soon as you have four people working together in like groups of things, it's not Takeshi's Castle, the game. I, I think it could be. Yeah, but, well, then, but could what be. I'm saying is, that they they need well, to. I, I think it's not because it's. I don't know because it's not. That's but the, if we but if we're saying the game will will fail potentially because it needs to do you know it doesn't scratch at any of those itches that people have got then you say well how could they have made it scratch those itches more and you can say well you either go solidly single player and add more to it or you go team based and you make it more intrinsically a team based game like i think okay like we've, we've all said this <clears throat> game's not going to last very long as it is they're going to have to I've change. not said that at all well i think me and chris have kind of agreed yeah. that we won't although sort of, look lo loads of, we might be in the minority uh, Jonesy, because loads of people are saying, oh, is this the next big game? Um, but well, Jamie, okay, Jamie on enough. your point, okay, this is coming yeah. directly from their blurb. Fallout Guys is a massively multiplayer party game. It's, it's yeah. most definitely set up to be a party game, dude. I completely Agreed. disagree with you that you say, oh, like, there's no co-op. No, I, 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 use, I use the word party Okay, but party game ago, and co-op game, it's, it's like a, a similar thing. They, they are, it's a Venn fucking diagram, party game, co-op game. No, if I went to a party and someone pulled out a board game, I wouldn't expect to have a teammate. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, there's, I, there's nothing about a kind of quote, quote unquote party environment that suggests you have to work together. And you, can, you can have a competitive game that's still a party game. But then, but then if this like, is a party like Jackbox, game, what size like no one's playing Jackbox, a party game, and saying, "God, I wish I had a teammate who could answer this question." Okay, with but me. imagine Jackbox then, and then if you if you are the person with the least points in a round, you just get eliminated from the game. You just have to sit there. There are Jackbox ga Jackbox games that have that rule. Yeah, but, but the then in Jackbox, game, but in no, Jackbox, you're playing. You 
you play against each other, right? Like that's the whole point is you yeah. play against each other. As, as you technically are in Fall Guys. Yeah, you are. You, and in Fall Guys, you are playing against other people, but you, that's like saying, why don't you have a party with 60 people you don't know? And like, well, because I'm not talking to any of them. It's a pretty boring party if we're all sitting around not talking, like ignoring each other. I, I'm Like I said, I'm kind of in the middle. I, I feel like they should have gone, not should have gone, but maybe if they had more teamy elements, even if it automatically cut to your teammates, teammates for when it went to... Um, the, uh, yeah. the when you they, died, they, that they, makes sense. Well, they, they, that's they, a simple, fix. especially that's a simple. Yeah, fix. I will say, you, a, especially with it being free, right? There are so many people that are going to download this and tell their friends to download this because there's no reason not to. Yeah, and there probably should be more hooks in that game for if you're partying up, then it's like a little bit more aware about yeah. the fact that you're but playing don't, with don't your friends. It, though, Jamie, it's it's free on PlayStation, but it's not free on Xbox, it's not free on play on True. on PC. It's twenty dollars on Steam. But I mean, that's still a, a captive audience of tens of millions of people on PlayStation Plus. This is what's happening. They know, they know, the bastards, they know how fucking minimal this game is. So they're like, yeah, PlayStation, sure. Give it away for free, sure. We'll try and make <laughs> our money from the, the, the season pass. Look, it's, it's, it's worked out for a game before on PlayStation, right? Where Rocket League comes out, it's a free game, and they make money from skins and shit. And Rocket League is like a fucking worldwide phenomenon. But this, yep. is, this is not Rocket League. It's interesting. It's interesting. I I would like to be a lot more positive on this game because like I said, I had a good time with, with you guys, but I will not I'm not gonna go back to this game because there's no point. That see that's big because you, you could just play it on PlayStation Plus in August for free. But so this is the question for me, right? You guys have both played it, I've played it as well. Would you buy it if it wasn't free? No. N- no. There you go. Okay. Should we move on to the next story then? This is a this is a fun little one. Um, so uh, we know that Gabe has been stuck in New Zealand for a little while. Um, he sailed his little boat down there. Little, yeah, his the, super yacht, the COVID refugee, Gaben. <laughs> exactly. Um, and he couldn't leave, and he got a bit bored. And so I guess planning a party is not keeping him busy enough. So he popped onto um, New Zealand <laughs> TV, um, and during an interview, he was asked the question of whether or not. It's Xbox or PlayStation 5. Uh-huh. Like, is it is it going to be Xbox Series X? Is it going to be PlayStation 5? Who's going to win? And his answer was effectively, well, come on, well, it's, hey, it's so Xbox. No, it wasn't who's going to win. Yeah, it wasn't who's going to win. It was which one would he buy, wasn't it? No, it was which, well, I, which I, one I, is better, intrinsically. Sorry, which one's better. better. I meant for him, like who would, who's going to win for him? Nah, right? that's you. You can't phrase it like that because winning All right, let means me, sales. <laughs> let me let me rephrase then. Um, to him, which is the better um, console? I will not use the word win. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was an interesting it was very interesting because <laughs> I saw the clip from this and I was kind of like wow that's that's kind of big coming from from Gabe it's, it's a hell of a thing to say especially on like a t- you know it's, and it's gone worldwide right it's gone viral um, because effectively to, to stand behind the Xbox and say yeah that's the better console is a hell of a thing to do especially unpaid <laughs> I guess he hasn't been I, yeah, paid given yeah exactly money. I mean Gabe's like one of the richest dudes in the world he doesn't need to be paid by Microsoft for sure but I think that the interesting thing here is just how emphatic he was with his answer he was like oh pff, yeah Xbox obviously so you made an interesting point when we were discussing it before we hit that juicy record button Jonesy where you were like he he's probably a, a, a person who would only look at the kind of numbers of it right yeah, absolutely. Well, in my mind, yeah, exactly. He's looking at, he's crunching numbers and he's talking about system power and he's looking at that and that's what's making him give that answer. Because realistically, um, in my mind, if you're going to factor in um, what makes a console worthwhile buying, like we said, he wasn't talking about winning, he was talking about which one um, is better, yeah. then you can't just take into con- consideration hardware and power and and these sorts of things. You have to consider things like the user interface. You have to consider about the the um, first-party titles. You have to consider a whole range of things that I, I don't necessarily think he was thinking about. I, I don't know, dude. I, I think... I think- Valve is a company, even though they don't really focus on console, I would imagine that they've got both dev kits. And I think they probably sure. know Xbox and PlayStation backwards at this point, what what each console has to offer. Um, it, it's interesting in that Gabe didn't necessarily say, oh, well, the Xbox is more powerful, so it's better. It, what he was kind of alluding to was uh, probably more as an experience. Uh, Jamie, I think you you kind of, hit the nail on the head in terms of what you said about it. Um, 
I'm trying to remember what I said. Um, <laughs> right, so, uh, so I, I'll lead you there because we were talking about um, Valve is, in, is inherently a services company. They know oh, services right, yeah. and what services yeah. is all about. They're not necessarily a games company anymore. You, you can't deny it. Steam is their biggest um, moneymaker. Yeah. And I think like Gabe and, and almost anyone else who doesn't have any skin in the game would almost have to see it the same way, right? You look at PlayStation and Xbox, there are a number of things that influence which one people buy. One of them is ecosystem, which one you're more used to, which one you're more ingrained in, which one your friends are a part of. That stuff can change. A lot of people went 360 to PS4, myself included. But that stuff, assuming no one drops the ball significantly, like Don Matrick did in 2013, <laughs> like people tend to stick with that stuff where they can. Yeah. Um, Another thing is like uh, power and price and the kind of the efficiency of the cost and the cost effectiveness, I guess, of the the console and first party titles. But the yeah. new player in that game is services, and there's no question that Xbox are leading the services game. The other point I made before we started recording is that everyone assumes that PlayStation is the place to go to first party titles, and they definitely have been for the last seven years. But when you look forward to that stuff, when you're saying that you're buying a PlayStation Five for the first party support. It's a, you're talking about a, a hypothetical. You're talking about if, buts, and maybes. There's a track record, absolutely. But when you buy a PlayStation 5, because the next Naughty Dog game, or the next Sucker Punch game, or the next Gorilla game is going to be good, you're, that, you're taking a leap of faith. A small one for most people, but admittedly something of a leap of faith that is just as takeable on the Xbox side of things. There's just as much evidence that Horizon will be good as there is that Fable will be good. So I think someone like Gabe looks at it and like like you said, like we don't know prices yet. He might I, have to know something we don't. But. I, I, I don't think he'd know final price. I, I no, don't think doesn't. that the companies themselves know final prices yet. I agree, I agree. But I think so. I think what he sees is the more powerful console with the better services and a shot at having decent first party support. Yeah. Like I think it's interesting from the services side because, of course, we've talked recently about how um, Xbox are effectively saying it doesn't matter if you don't buy an Xbox Series X because you can play everything we make anyway in all these different ways. And going forward into the future, you're going to be able to play everything any way you want. Yeah. yeah. So they they're definitely winning on the on the game side, but I think specifically around the hardware side, if we're focusing on that. In some sense, Xbox have made it whereby you don't need to buy an Xbox. Yeah. I think PlayStation will lose in the long run because they're going to just out. They're going to put themselves in a difficult position where people say, "Why would lose, I lose what?" Uh, lose in the sense of um, I don't know how many years down the line, but getting to the point where they're being like protectionist and you can't play their titles on any other in any other way except for on the hardware in your room, in your house, or your room, or whatever. Um, there, more and more people are going to go, well, I like the way Xbox let me play yeah. whatever I want, wherever I want. And so maybe in 10 years' time, 15 years' time, maybe it will shift and they'll be doing better unless PlayStation change their ways to some degree. This, this, this is something that I was going to ask you guys about, actually. Do you think more and more that PlayStation, being so protective of their, their IP and their first parties, do you think that they're almost making a mistake? Uh, we, we saw it happen with Nintendo, right? Nintendo were like, no, 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 you know what, we're all about our first party. Like, are you going to buy a PlayStation solely because it doesn't necessarily matter where you play your CODs, doesn't matter where you play this, that, the other, but these are the PlayStation games that you can only play on PlayStation. And actually, even that is kind of getting blurred now because fucking Horizon Zero Dawn is launching on PC, Death Stranding has just launched. Um, but is Sony maybe putting too much stock in their first person stuff? Whereas... Xbox is like, you know, we can't put too much stock in our first person, uh, first party, so we're just going to go a lot broader. Like, uh, so going back to that I, e, going back to that E3 conference that they had two years ago, when they were like, these are the four games. This is all we're going to talk about in our fucking E3 press conference, because actually, first party wise, they didn't have anything else. But you can make the argument that he didn't need anything else because one Xbox didn't do anything of any significance in that time. You can and make second that of all, yeah. and second of all, like we've already had this in this very podcast a new story about not just how well Ghost of Tsushima sold, yeah. but also in that same by extension of that story, how well The Last of Us Part Two sold, how well we went back to Spider Man, how well Her Horizon sold. I think Death Stranding was a bit iffy in the end, but it, like we're talking about. 
a company that is constantly outdoing itself in terms of first party sales against a company that is giving away its first party titles for sometimes as little as one pound a month or yeah. one dollar a month. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I can absolutely see why from a business perspective, Sony look at that and say, there's no reason to change our shtick going forward because Uncharted, I don't know what's next, but like Uncharted 5, uh, fucking The Last of Us 3, whatever, whatever direction they go in, obviously we already know that there's another Spider-Man and another Horizon coming out. Those things will move consoles, at least yeah. in the short term. Will that will will you know that sort of angle wither out and die over the course of 10 to 15 years, which is the time frame Jonesy quoted? Like, maybe, but there's no reason for them at the moment to look at the numbers and suggest there's anything they need to change going forward because it's working. They're selling more units, they're selling more games, and the services war right now feels like a hearts and minds thing. Yeah. There's a, there's a slightly... I mean, it doesn't really... It's weird because it doesn't really translate into numbers because they seem to be doing better and better with numbers all the time. But the odd thing, um, like as you sort of mentioned, Chris, that they were backing these four horses, right? So they were backing Spider-Man, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, um, and The Last of Us Part Two. And then when you think about how well those games have done from like a PR perspective, not so much from a sales point because they've actually done well from sales, but Spider-Man is the only one who I'd say was like a, crit uh, uh, sorry, a PR success because Ghost of Tsushima is now running at like a, re a reasonable rating, I think I want to say, but with critics, it was a kind of a bit mediocre from what I think people have said. Last of Us Part Two, from a, a um, customer standpoint, whether or not it's true, like I don't, I'm not one of these people, but has been absolutely hammered. And then Death Stranding, like my game of the year when it came out and I still stand by that say that game's fantastic, got absolutely roasted in some circles and people laughing, calling it a walking simulator. So when I think about those four games, I don't doesn't to me look like a good... Um, it doesn't look like a, uh, they had a good run on that, in that sense. And if, we, they, if the same happened again with another, let's say, four or five big titles they put forward, do they, do they start to be worried, do you think, from a PR perspective? Or mm. for, because sales are strong, they don't really well, need to care? So, so what do we know for sure it's going to PS5, right? We know there's going to be another Gran Turismo. That'll sell fine because Gran Turismo mm -hmm. is a Gran Turismo. Uh, they've got um, Ratchet and Clank, which will sell well, especially a as a launch title, um, you know, especially because yeah. it can show off the capabilities of the new uh, hardware, right? Uh, yeah. Spider-Man will sell well because Spider-Man- But it's not a full game though, right? Says true. That's, that's our true, but it's, it's an IP that they can yeah. put stock into and, and it will sell well and- there, there will be a Spider-Man 2 at yeah, some point. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, sure. And, yeah, sure. and we, I mean, fucking hell, if there isn't, I would fucking shoot myself in the head. God of War Part Part 2 Redux Ragnarok 55, I don't <laughs> fucking know what they're going to call it, but that's going to be on the cards as well. And and you can, t you, you can say, chances are of those being well-received for what they are. Because remember, like something like, let's say Ghost of Tsushima, and something like Death Stranding, new IPs where people don't know what to expect. But if you talk about a Ratchet and Clank game, you talk about a Spider-Man game, you talk about a God of War game, you talk about a Gran Turismo, you know in each of those categories exactly what to expect. So I don't think, I think those last four games at that, at that, at that E3 were very symptomatic of we are winding down production on the PS4. Sure. So I, I think I think it's yeah. kind of different to the two kind I, of scenarios. And I'm going to take the absolute polar opposite, Jonesy, of your angle, and I'm going to say that those four titles... Was it wasn't my angle. I was asking a question. <laughs> I made sure I was okay, I'm, then I'm going to take the opposite to the angle that your question posed, which is that I think those four games were in many respects like an overwhelming PR success. And I think okay. when games like The Last of Us 2 post up 4 million plus sales, it's a reminder that for as strange I guess and uh, I don't know strange is kind of almost the only word I've got for it the response was <laughs> online we are talking about the tiniest of the tiny vocal minorities yeah a skid mark on the 4 million plus sales everyone I know in real life whether it's you two whether it's everyone else we talk about from like like Martin and and uh, like uh, and uh, Sam Richards and all the guys I play Call of Duty with, you know, like yeah. like ev every single person I know bought that game, and very few people I know spoke about it in the same way. The kind of the online community that had a very prominent backlash about yeah. that game spoke yeah, yeah. about it. Like that game was a success and will continue to be a success. I think, and I think the same for 
maybe not Death Stranding, but certainly um, so so Spider-Man that, uh, and... To kind of make your point, if I can just say quickly, that so Metacritic have got Last of Us... I don't um, think people part- care. <laughs> no, what, what I was going to say was as a, as a, to make your point, Metacritic have got Last of Us Part 2 on a 5.6, and a, a lot of people would say, as a user, a lot, a lot of people... Lo- that, hold on, hold yeah. on. Hold on, but a lot of people... We shouldn't um, even be invoking no, Metacritic but hold on, Joe, scores. Joe, let, me make, even make, even the let me Let me make, let me make the point, right? point. Points out the window. Wow. Don't half know. the people... <laughs> so half the people on that user score have given it a, like a, basically have given it a zero and half the people have given it a 10 right yep. but actually when you think about it the zeros on that that listing it makes up 1% of the um, of the people who bought the game so 1% of people have have said this game is awful on metacritic so when we actually think there about are 40, it 19- there are 40,000 zero reviews uh, there are so it's at a five point six. So what I'm saying is half of those one hundred and thirty six thousand ratings are negative. Um, if you just take it as like from the average and, and half are good. So when we say right, so so sixty thousand people have effectively said this game's tripe, but actually that makes up one percent of everyone who's bought that game. Yeah. You actually realise that the numbers of people that have played that game. Um, is staggering in comparison. Ninety-nine yeah. percent of people have not gone yeah. to Metacritic. You know, you know what would be really game interesting, bad. right? It, purely hypothetical, because this could never happen. But if Naughty Dog, uh, let's say at the beginning of next year, so with the new consoles, if they released Last of Us Part Three, right? Because yeah, it'll yeah. be close enough to Last of Us Part Two, and and the perceived fallout and backlash to that, and you could you could. Um, you could look at the sales and see if The Last of Us Part Two actually... Because the thing is, like, you, you can convince people to buy a game. That's not necessarily... That, that's like half the battle. But to have someone enjoy that game and finish that game is the other half of the battle. So maybe it's a case sure. of, like, yes, it sold well, but does that mean that people enjoyed it? It doesn't mean anything. It just means people bought the game. So if you, it's always interesting so, to look at the the trophies on the PlayStation it, and see what percentage yeah, exactly. of people got them, and see how few people, for example, finish a game that they even start. But yeah. but it's not even that. Like you could buy a game with good intentions, you could finish the game, and you could still not like it, and say to yourself, "I will not <laughs> buy the next iteration of it." So that's why I'm saying, like, if the Last of Us Part Two and the Last of Us Part Three were bought a lot closer together, and you compared like the three month metrics let's say of each one I, that would be really interesting would it do the same or more or would it be drastically less or maybe just slightly less and maybe you don't maybe you don't tie it to a launch title because then that's almost saying like well if you're buying this console then you have to buy this game because you don't have much other choice maybe if right. it was just like completely devoid of any kind of console and, and just taking the titles on the side that would be so interesting yeah can i bring up yeah. one more one more case study that's actually kind of interesting and because in many ways it's almost like the reverse, The Last of Us Part Two, and it's a game that actually wasn't out by the exactly time of that E3 talk about. because yeah, because it was the sort of like the forgotten child that was almost uh, uh, omitted from that E3 press conference as a sign of disrespect, <laughs> and that's day, and that's and that's Days Gone. Yeah, yes. Days Gone, famous for being poorly received by critics, uh, getting a five out of ten at Gamespot, for example, to then be weirdly welcomed. Um, with open arms by what I kind of see as a similar almost portion of the audience that hate The Last of Us Part Two, <laughs> Like, this weird portion of the internet that seems devoted to doing the polar opposite of whatever the mainstream uh, press are doing. Um, they apparently love Days Gone. Uh, videos on YouTube calling Days Gone like the misunderstood child were blowing up <laughs> left, right, and center. No, the critics just didn't get it. It's actually great. Uh, Days Gone was a bizarrely big success. I'm pulling the stuff from Wikipedia on the fly, but um, it was the, obviously the best-selling game in the UK the week of release. It stayed there for another three consecutive weeks. It um, launched sales in Japan, outsold God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn. Wow. And um, in North America, by June, um, it had become the... Uh, it was in the top ten best-selling games of the entire year. Um, we still had six months to go. Um, like, Days Gone was... And that was an unmitigated success, like, in, in sales terms. Um, and I think that's just another weird example of going back to that Sony PR machine of, like, there is something about the Sony first-party brand, the Sony, you know, interactive entertainment, the Worldwide Studios, that kind of label. I think it is almost like a weird seal of approval by this stage. And yeah. I, th- I think, again, we... 
in some respects, like Days Gone is the counter to what I'm talking about, because Days Gone is an example of what I call the vocal minority in The Last of Us 2 actually affecting sales um, and the amount of people who are willing to ignore critics. But then but, maybe you're. But that, I don't see how they could be. I think maybe you're right in a different sense in that the people are always going to buy those first party PlayStation games, and it yeah. doesn't matter what the vocal minority say. It just ha- so happens that in sometimes they coincide with what yeah. the vocal minority says, and, and sometimes it goes the other I way. I think that's why it's almost removed from PR. Like I, I think the right. negative critic reviews around Days Gone affected it as little as the negative audience reviews affected The Last of Us Two going forward. Like right. I think that brand and that family. Will will stay pretty strong moving forward, and I think the response to the showcase that they did last month was was kind of evidence of that, right? Right. It's kind of it's kind of terrifying sometimes when we talk about this stuff, and it makes me realise how the ecosystem that we live in as YouTubers and as people that cover games news and with a podcast, you feel like you're you're talking to a lot of people out there, and you have a slice of the world. And you can like look at numbers when you realize how small and insignificant <laughs> everything we discuss, or the people that we use, or the people we talk about actually is. is you, you know, yeah, they, you, you, know. S- you said the words echo chamber earlier, right? Like, we, we uh, I all. Don't think, I don't think so, but yeah, I said I'm pretty it. sure you did. It. Oh, Chris said, said it. Oh, my bad. Like, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Reddit, whether it's this podcast, whatever it is, like, we exist and we play games and we talk about games within a vacuum that represents the tiniest fraction of like. Yeah. The global impact of games as a, the, as an industry, um, and it, it's easy to forget that when you look at um, uh, Neil Druckmann's replies on Twitter and think, "Wow, everyone's memeing on this game," when in fact ninety eight percent of the people who bought The Last of Us Part Two don't know who Neil Druckmann is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. But okay, well that was we. Well, so we went from Gabe yeah. all the way around to Last of Us Part Two. So, uh, yeah. but there you go. That was that was Gabe and NZ <laughs> dropping 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 bombs on PlayStation. Uh, so our last story for today, um, a guy that I think we all well, I know me and Jamie listen to uh, relatively regularly. Although I've dropped off him a bit, Chris, I, I think you do sometimes, but I'm not quite sure. I have but Joe never Rogan, listened to a full Joe Rogan podcast. So. You've never, but he he is the big daddy of the podcasting scene. He is, given yeah. that he was what was it 150 million to move over to Spotify? I don't think we know think the exact number, like but yeah, somewhere around there. Right? Let's just say that then, because no one's going to correct us. Nine figure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, a big figure. He was paid. He was paid the big bucks to go over to Spotify. Big, um, big monies. He, big monies. Big monies. Big monies. Well, um, maybe this is a little bit irrelevant after our previous discussion on the one we just had about echo chambers and uh, <laughs> minorities. <laughs> but he caught a little bit of heat um, in the last week because he said on his podcast, I can't remember who he's actually talking to, but he basically said that video games are a waste of time. Um, and so, actually, to be fair, he responded uh, to some of the criticism he got, and he by releasing because he sort of does snippets of his of his podcast on YouTube. He actually released a new video, which was a longer section of the podcast to kind of give his comments in the full context. Because I think he thought it was maybe some unfair, um, some unfair reactions to what he said. But let me just tell you what he said, um, which was sort of clipped, and people have been reporting on. He said, "Video games are a real problem. They're, uh, you know, why? Because they're fucking fun." I have a real problem with them. You do them, and they're really exciting, but you don't get anywhere. Yeah. Um, which was an interesting quote so from him. So was, was that longer clip the one where he went in and talking about, like, uh, you, can, you can study Aikido or whatever it fucking was for, for two years? Jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu, jiu-jitsu yeah. whatever. Boy, fucking hitting people. He, he, he loves jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So he, he had said, oh, yeah, if you do jiu-jitsu for two years and you get up to a fucking, I don't know what, it, a fucking fuchsia belt or whatever he fucking said. <laughs> and uh, he was like, hey, and then you can like, hey, oh, I, I can train people and I can open up a business. And and he's like, but if you just play a game, you play a multiplayer game and you spend two years doing that, you've got nothing to show for it. That, yes. That's kind of what he was getting at, right? But then, bless him, I fucking hate the dude. But Ninja came back with a very decent <laughs> response to that and said... Dude, there are just as many uh, workable business opportunities from playing games as from doing some kind of sport. Because he was like, you can go into casting, you can go into streaming. You don't even have to be good at a game to get into streaming and make a career out of it. You know? So I, I, because I tweeted sort of similar thing. I didn't see Ninja's reply, but I I basically tweeted and said um, that... If you just if you just say because some people then said you could be a streamer like if you get really good at a game like you, in you don't even have to but be then, good dude 
But then my, my point was then, actually, you don't need to be a streamer. You could go into modeling, developing, program writing. You could be a YouTuber like we do. You could make news stuff. You could do... There's a, there's a lot of stuff you could do related to your love of video games. Um, and it made me kind of think about all the people that say... Um, if you follow your passion and you're passionate about something and you pursue it, that actually there's a whole load of ways that you can be involved um, in an area. You don't have to just be, oh, I'm really good, I'm a streamer. Like you said, you don't have to be a good streamer, you could be a streamer. Yeah. But there's also loads of other ways that playing video games could get you into, um, Dude, you, could sort of yeah. give you a career and pay you money. You, you could be a fucking caster. You could, like you said, you could get into development of games and that could all stem from your love of playing games for two years playing the same game. Like, yeah. I, 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 I think that what happened here is he, this dude, I mean, Joe Rogan's, from what I understand, like I said, I don't really watch his podcast, but I've seen plenty of clips and I know who he is and what he's about, right? Um, he's a very shrewd, smart dude, but he's also a very dumb yeah. dude. Like, yeah, I, think, that's, that's, I think he'd agree with that. You, you know, uh, well, he, yeah. he knows exactly what he's doing by saying this. He's like, you know what, fucking, let's call our gamers. And you know what? Uh, oh, let, honestly, I don't agree with that. Oh, I don't think that's why he did this. I don't no. think it's fully why he did it, but there's, there's fucking, he knows what he's doing when he, anyone knows what they're doing if they're saying, oh, you know what, games are a fucking problem. Because that, that's the, the story is all the time when it comes to video games. I don't know. The, the way I see it, like, I see that dude as rather than being a guy who's a dumb, I see it as a dude who has stumbled into a career whereby professionally he gets high and sits in front of a mic, <laughs> records for two to three hours, and releases it regardless of what the fuck he says. I think if we if we did two to three hours of podcasting a day while high, we would inevitably come out with shit that like we maybe reflect on and say, actually that's not representative of how I feel about the thing on the whole, or that was off the cuff. Oh yeah, just that's like, what we'd say. Just no, like, we'd hey, say, if, hey, that was dumb. <laughs> Yeah, like if Troy Baker knocked on my door right now, I'd be like, dude, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, that that's actually not reflective, a reflection of me or how I talk to people or the kind of individual I am. Like, I was trying to be entertaining, I was trying to be funny, so on and so forth. I personally don't think he came in... I think there's a he believes what he said in the way he said it, but I don't think he was trying to call out gamers or trying to be inflammatory. I think oh, he just kind of like... I don't think he was trying to call them out, but I, I thought he knew that, like... Obviously, this is something that will get people talking. I disagree. I disagree. I, I think he's past the point of trying to make, make headlines. I think he just says what he thinks. Um, yeah, and he's, I got, think, he's got his money. He's got his Spotify money. Yeah, like, he knows yeah. that. You don't, you don't, and I think this is like one of those things where like, you get high and you get a bit sort of like prophetic and philosophical and this is what he <laughs> thought about video games. And I think it's a little bit out of touch. I think it's uh, reductive in a way that it can, uh, can apply to anything from watching movies to reading a book to uh, to listening to music, all shit that I'm sure he spends plenty of time doing, to, hey, to as many people have made the point, it's video games are just as unhelpful as listening to Joe Rogan's podcast. It's 99% <laughs> of the time. Like, That's a good it, it's point. A it's a reductive opinion. The one thing I will say about this whole Joe Rogan thing, though, is I actually think he was being much more personal than people have like realised because he often talks about how he was a gamer and yeah. he used to play a lot of Quake and he still plays games to this day. Well, it, so when he says like they're a problem, I think he means a problem for him. Yeah. So dude, I think if, he if was you, almost saying... You, so reading the text, it just seems like he's saying video games are a problem. But actually, if you watch the clip, exactly. what he was saying, and it, it's plain as day, he was saying, he's saying like, oh, it's a problem because that's how I'm experiencing that. For sure, for sure, for yeah. sure. And as a guy who's like, he's trying to do his, he's commentating, yeah. he's trying to do the podcast, he's trying to do all these different, like millions of things. And then I'm sure that as someone is trying to do that and then you're like, shit, but I really want to play like five hours yeah. of, of a video game. That for you, you're being, like for you, it's a problem. I yeah. don't think he means like, get, yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I don't think he means dude, games are a problem. I don't think from, games from are my a problem. perspective, okay, that I haven't played any video games pretty much this week, this week, except for like streams and stuff. But if, if I didn't, the reason I didn't is because I had things to do. Yeah. If I didn't do those things to play those games, guess what? It it's a problem, right? Like that's yes. So you, you can relate to it in terms of that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I can absolutely. Like I have times when I like three in the morning and my wife's <laughs> like, "What the hell are you doing? You have to get up in four hours and you're still sat on your ass playing computer games." That for me that day that games were a problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that doesn't mean that the, I want to the, go the away. Worst or I think is when you do that and and your, and your wife or you know girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, whatever it may be, and they say. 
well, you're not you're not sleeping in tomorrow. Don't don't think you're sleeping <laughs> in tomorrow. Like, Get your ass out of bed. This is why <laughs> I feel like if I ever end up in that situation, I need to do like the gamer version of a prenup, basically. <laughs> it's like, look, we've got to we got to sort out the ground rules rules before we start fighting about this shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wish the I, Jamie would, prenup. I wish I had the foresight to have done that because. Yeah. It, whenever whenever a game comes out that I really want to kind of get involved in, I'm trying to think what the last game was. Maybe it was God of War with Spider-Man. I, I turn to my wife and I say, all right, you do realize that you're going to be, let's say, you're going to be a God of War widow for like two months, <laughs> right? It's like, don't expect me to sit on that couch and watch, watch shows with you, uh, you know, come weekends, like you're yeah. on your own because I'm going to be fair enough. My, I, I, the, you know what? When Cyberpunk comes out, that's exactly what's going to happen. My wife is going to be a Cyberpunk widow, for sure. Nice. Yeah, I think, and I think that is completely reasonable. <laughs> she she hey, won't think so, but sure. Just show her this. We're all agreeing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell it. Hey, look, I've got previous, so we're, I'm doing it again. It's all good. <laughs> um, but look, with that, it's nearly two hours that we've been doing the podcast. Um, so there's only left for me to say thank you very much for joining us. Um, if you want to reach out to us on social media, we are at Super Show Pod. We're on YouTube and lots of different pod- podcasting platforms. Um, so if you listen to us on a platform, maybe watch us on YouTube. And if you watch us on YouTube and you're out and about, maybe just take us with you in your pocket on a podcast. Can, can I, can I um, make a request? If, if you're listening, head on over to our YouTube. Give the video a like. You don't have to watch it. That's fine. But give the video a like <laughs> and hit that subscribe button. You never have oh. to come back to YouTube at all. But I just want those numbers to go up a little bit quicker than they're going, you know? There you go. That's our request. Um, and <laughs> J- how Jamie we can know to his call. he is. Wow. Yeah. This is startling stuff. <laughs> you can let us know that you've reached the end of the podcast by using the code word, which this week... It's got to be, be... Big monies. It's got to be big, big monies. monies. But you have to put hand emojis as well. Big monies. Big like monies. Hand, one hand emoji, big monies, other hand emoji. Big monies. Big, Big money, I like it. I, I'm, I'm down for that. Hell yeah. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much. And we will see you uh, next week. See ya.